everyone we are here tornado tag podcast um the last show of 2019 mm-hmm. um we're gonna end off with our our, our tt awards we're gonna end that out um we're gonna throw some cool stuff in here just kind of like some decade awards um uh, tyler's been doing it on all things pro wrestling and then he's been kind of putting them over on our page too so we'll talk a little bit that maybe have some some uh, awards um then the first first show of the new year we're gonna bring back topics yep um and then we're also gonna do like a prediction show we're gonna predict some things for 2020 predict the future Ooh, Try to predict the future um and if we're wrong we'll make fun of ourselves for it um <clears throat> That being said, if you guys like what you hear, check out the um, links and descriptions below. You can check out our merch page, donations, um, all of our pay, uh, tabs below for Murder My Dude, uh, Calling It the Power Ring, and everything in between. Um, follow us on Facebook at Tornado Tag Podcast, as well as on Instagram for IWEP Network. You can find, um, if you are listening to this on, on YouTube and you want to listen to audio only, if you search IWEP Network on any podcast or music platform, you will find us. You can check out uh, this channel. Um, just kind of like it's kind of like something to YouTube where everything's all in one location. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff coming up this year. Um, really excited. Our second show of the new year, we're going to have the Retro Studio, Retro Soft Studio guys calling in. That's cool. Uh, and by that time, we'll have the full brackets of who's yeah, in what. Will I make it? Will you be a first rounder in one of these brackets is the, is the question. Oh. <laughs> you, got, you got two more chances. You got two yeah, more. Yeah, yeah two more. Show, yeah. So that's 16 more people. So We know 16 of them. Bree, right? Bria. Bria. Yeah. Bria said when every time that post was up. She count, She said she, she counted, counted them. She counted and she said <laughs> yeah. you led every single yeah, post. Yeah, so I have to be in You this. have to be. So unless I think it's a straight a fir- up yeah. robbery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know unless, I mean? it's, unless it's a work. Unless yeah. it's a work, yeah. Because <laughs> in the, wrestling, never. Yeah. Here's yeah. the yeah. thing. Matt Cross, like they announced him in today's thing, he's like super like indie royalty, yeah. you know what I mean? So like I could see them already having a deal with him. Be like, yeah. we'll just be in this hey, little we'll fucking just, thing. Just yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right. What if they just give like every, like each bracket winner gets in That'd be something. That would be dope. Yeah. That's what they should do. Yeah. Or, or like here, this guy won, but uh, we're going to also pick the, the guy he faced in that last two. Yeah. So it's like, okay. It's yeah. funny. I saw RJ City there. I'm wondering, because I know he's, yeah, he's really, Canada. I know he's really tight with Arquette. He does a lot of stuff teamed with David Arquette. Yeah. I'm like, well, is David Arquette going to be in the game? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. So that would, that would be hilarious. In. I would love that. I yeah. think, I think, the three guys I seen the most was was you, um, was David Starr. I seen a lot. He's not in it yet. Yeah, yeah I seen him a lot too. Yeah. David Starr. I seen Simon Miller. I don't know. How he He's is. the guy from, He's what, from culture. what Culture. Oh, um, no idea. And then I seen Across a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Matt Cross. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's, I let's, didn't see Colby Carino made out. Like I didn't see anyone vote for him. Nothing against them. Yeah. <laughs> I, see yeah. I think I seen a couple, and I was surprised that I seen a couple. I had a great month. I mean, maybe on Twitter. Yeah. Or, yeah. I don't think people are voting yet. I think they're just. You telling, can't. Yeah. They're I went look. Yeah. It's just the brackets. Yeah. And yeah. They're, they're gonna have gimmicks for like each one. Like I, don't know, I guess they want people to cut promos or something. But there's yeah. some like stipulations or something. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, you know. I mean, oh my, I'm so I'm, I'm pumped for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Excited. If I'm in it, you know. If I'm not, I'm still going to buy the game. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll, I'm probably going to buy two copies. I'm probably going to get it for oh, Xbox. Fi- oh, okay. And I will buy it for Switch. I would like to get a physical one if they do a physical. Yeah, I want a physical. Like maybe I want, down I want the road, the like the limited physical. run, like Ben gets. Yeah. I want the Switch physical. Okay, yeah. And then I want digital for Xbox. Are they 100% doing physical? I don't hope know. I don't, I don't think so. I, oh, man. I, yeah. I don't think. I love having physical copies. Me too, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, limited run does, like, the games that come out like that, they do. Yeah. That's their whole thing. Mm. 
Well, we got to we got to kind of see one of the guys from this video game this over the weekend, uh, the Blue Meanie. Oh yeah, yeah. he's in it. Yeah. Um, in it. Yeah, BWL's in it. I want to just want to thank everyone who listened to that uh, the PPW um, review show for for putting it out on a Christmas Eve and and putting it out for two days and a holiday mm-hmm. over thirty five plays, which is really good for being like we usually don't hit our plays until almost the day of our new show and that's when everyone kind of jumps on yeah but for being a holiday man like people listen to a lot of it and so it did really really well and i want to thank everyone um and like i said if you guys are listening and, and you're a wrestler referee promoter podcast let us know um call, well, we're, we're more than welcome to have you guys call in um and, and, and hang out with and talk to us a little bit. So definitely looking forward to that for the new year. And also thank you everybody at PPW. So hospitable, you know, so helpful yeah. with everything. Mm-hmm. Like cool. always giving us feedback. And they like I know they like the feedback from us, but we get feedback from them too and it's much appreciated. <laughs> yeah. It was it was a real fun night. It was cool to see some new faces. Um and it was just it was an overall real fun show. I, I really enjoyed it. And this is just my only soapbox. What I seen I, I enjoyed. Yes. But I didn't I get to see the whole this thing. This is my only soapbox thing and this is not going towards the PPW uh, staff. This is not going to the PPW roster. This is more of a call of action for the PPW fans. Please, do not just show up at a show because you're seeing a name on the marquee. I, To me, I feel if you go all the time and you're a PPW fan, but the only reason you're going there is because you want to see the main marquee guy, yeah, Rhino or something. you're missing the point of the whole show. I think that PPW roster has well enough earned your respect to buy a ticket if there's not a marquee guy there. Just be, <laughs> This is nothing coming from the PPW guys. This is me personally. Um it cannot be cheap to get those guys every time. You know yeah. what I mean? And mm. and 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 when you do bring in a guy like that, your other guys aren't getting and it's and I know it's not always about the money and it's not but you know what I mean like you have a guy out there almost break his legs over the weekend. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and the only reason your guys are showing like fans are showing up is cuz they want to see the Austinaries <laughs> and the Rhinos. But you have some amazing talent there. Like don't let that be your driving factor if you're going to go to yeah, a PPW show. Yeah. It's kind of like a, you know, all local bands playing. Well, they don't all suck, you know, yeah. like yeah. yeah, sure some do, but go some, support some are good. That. Some are yeah. great. Just go support that. That's the only thing that, like I said, that's not coming from anyone but me. Um because you know, going into the show, everyone's like, well, who's going to be at the next show? Like, that's the only thing that you're, is your selling point. And I, I've been seeing it on the Facebook page and stuff. And, it, and, I, and, I, and I'm not going to go in disrespect or say, like, you know, but it, it is what it is. Like, does that roster has earned your respect enough that you can go pay mm-hmm. a $15 ticket to go see a show. And it doesn't need to have a marquee name there. It just doesn't. It doesn't. That roster is phenomenal. So, no. Um, you want a selling point for the next show? Here's a selling point: Is the next show when Facade gets a big gold? That's that's yeah. a big question. You're right gonna there. see, yeah, Facade's possibly going for a championship. You have Sambo show who should be number one contenders against main event. Um, our boy Andy's a, a, a baby face. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> <coughs> um, so who knows, man? There's like three three characters. Like the billionaire, you know, is no, the, the billionaire playboy is no longer a heel. Maybe yeah, which either. I, I, maybe I he's know. gonna give everybody his money. Yeah, if you come to that like, next show. Yeah, he's like, gonna take a vow of poverty and give everybody <laughs> thousands of. No, uh, probably not. Yeah, um, I, I think he I should like still him. be heel. I love him. As yeah, a heel. that's I, that's I an he, interesting. He spit choice. on the crowd. Really? He yeah. tried to spit on us, which he shouldn't do because he get in trouble for it. That's why. I did that years ago. Like, don't spin the crowd. Someone could sue if water gets in their mouth or their eye or something. Like, oh, well, he missed and hit the announcer. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, he crushed Paul with it. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> it was awesome. I love that he did it. I thought it was funny. Um, but then he turned babyface. Kind of, yeah. The hell? Not yeah. kind of. He did. He yeah, did. Yeah. yeah, he did. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was a great show. If you want to go listen to it, go check out the last episode. It is audio only. So if you are watching this, another thing too, if you're watching this, we do have bonus episodes that are extreme ex- uh, only for audio. So if you are listening, please, um, and you're you're kind of a YouTube guy, go check out the stuff that's on our audio pages as well. Spotify, Google mm-hmm. Plays, iTunes, everything. There is some episodes on there that you are missing if you are a loyal guy that wants to listen to everything. Our girl. Um, that being said, uh, let's get right into the TTs. All right, the TTs coming to a close. Unless anyone has any topics that happened over the week. Well, it's, it's been a real slow week. Kind of breaking. I know Tyler told us as he came in today, it looks like there was a title change at the Madison Square Garden house show today. Yeah. Uh, Andrade is the new WWE US champion. Beat oh, Rey Mysterio wow. at, at the Garden. like 10 minutes ago, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. And, he, and he's... Maybe they'll flip that, or give him the new title, because they said there's a room of new right. design. And he's still with Selena. Vega. Yeah. Well, I, I I think he should be. Don't break them up. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good tandem. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anything else? Yeah. yeah did you see uh, 
Tanahashi said if he beats Chris Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom, he's going to ask for a title shot. I was like, and he said that in this big press conference. It wasn't him on his Facebook or something. Yeah. It's so like, you wouldn't say that unless something down the road is, is in the works. Did you watch the, um, Jer- uh, the Bucks and Kenny Omega? They did their Bucks new show where they do room service. Yeah. Do you see? They actually went pretty hard in New Japan. Really? How disrespected they felt. That they felt like. New, especially Kenny. Kenny was like, dude, I even put in my contract that I want to come back to Japan. Yeah. Like, same thing Jericho and Moxley are doing. Omega has in his contract that yep. can do that. And New Japan didn't welcome him back. They're like, well, we don't want you. Yeah. And he's like, I cannot believe how much I busted my ass for that company that they were just like, all right, you want to leave? Don't come back. Yeah, they, like, were like, it's, they were hurt. They were like, yeah. like a breakup. Like know? a breakup. Yeah. Well, yeah, then I don't crazy. need you. No, I don't ever want to talk to you. It yeah. seems like New Japan had a change at the top a uh, little while back, a couple years back with uh, Harold, Mage. Harold Mage. And it seems like at that point, some of the uh, elite guys, some of those guys tended to kind of drift away from New Japan a little bit. Yeah. And uh, they bought Stardom, and now Stardom, they said Stardom will never be on New Japan World, or never, never will cross. There's a Stardom match at Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it won't be long before they put Stardom on. And New Taz is going to be I'm on happy. the January 1st episode of AEW. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well. That just broke about like 20 yeah, minutes ago. Yeah, because he, uh, he stopped doing his show, his yep. radio show. Mm hmm. So are they going to have him be like a backstage guy? Or? I don't know. I guess we're going to see what he's going to do. Cole did commentary this oh, week in the dark. Another crazy big news. Two weeks in a row, uh, NXT beats AEW in the ratings. Well, AEW yeah. wasn't even on. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> was a, yeah. I don't think it beat the what, NBA. Did, did, uh, I don't think oh, they beat the oh, NBA that, in the ratings. I was going to so say, was TNT Christmas won. Story on? Did Christmas Story get a higher rating <laughs> yeah. for that hour? I bet you it probably does. I yeah, bet, it I probably does all day. And does NXT beat Christmas Story? Yeah. Speaking of NXT, they had Austin uh, Theory. He debuted and faced Roger Strong, and that was a great good match. match. Yeah, great, great, great yeah, match. it was good. I, I, I thought did, it was a highlight show, so I didn't. I didn't check it. it. Did uh, Shotzi wrestle too? I know she. Had yeah, she did. Taping. I heard yep. something. Yeah. Yeah. The other two matches. What were the other two matches? Um, there was a tag right with Keith <laughs> yes, Lee. Yes, Keith Lee and Leo Lee. Rush versus Damian Priest and. Oh, it's Nate Tony Nese. Was it was Tony, Tony Nese? I think. I think. Or was it someone of that caliber? Jack Gallagher? Gallagher no, Gallagher that? wrestled um, in a single. Yes, he wrestled in a single. Oh, oh yeah, that was actually I just, good, I just watched that was actually a good match. Is that Jack, yesterday I watched uh, it. Jack Gallagher versus uh, Swerve. Swerve, that's exactly okay. what it was. Yeah, that was a good match. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but it was, it was a fun NXT. I thought Raw was fun. I didn't watch it all. I read the results. I was like, ooh. It was a hard show. It was a hard show. It was especially hard because NWA Power came on. I was gonna say on fun Monday, show. so I watched NWA Power, which obviously the wrestling's a little bit better on Raw, and the production values are better. But that and that hour of NWA Power is tight; it moves quickly. See, here's here's the mm-hmm. thing, and then Raw is a little bit of a slag, even yeah. when it's good. I love NWA Power. I love the promos. I love the feel of it. I, but the wrestling man is so like they're trying so hard to make it old school. Yeah, that it literally sometimes I'm like, Jesus Christ, can we like get a little bit going in this match? Yeah, here? and like they have this tournament now for the NWA TV title and all the matches are six minute and five seconds long yeah like you have to win in that six, or like you both feel it and I'm like come on man <laughs> like, I, like, I like the little timer that goes down they're having these six minute matches <laughs> but I'll tell you what though Nick Aldis is just killing a man he's every week climbs up my ladder is like favorite yeah. person in the industry yeah. he's so damn Do you good. see this pin raw hit what's cool is in all this <laughs> I like if I if I had to re- we're doing the we're finishing out the TTs right now but if I had to revise anything on one, any of my lists I would put Nick Aldis at or near the top at Breakout Male Star. Yes. Yeah, strictly business. He has been. I can't so, wait to see their shirt. Although their their jackets are a little bit like the new Sambo yeah. show jackets, so yeah. it's like, hey, they look almost the same. Yeah, they're like but, the same black, white, and red. Well, my favorite thing of this the Christmas episode, what made no sense at all, was uh, Eli Drake comes out drinking a little bit of the bubbly, but they don't. They're, their crowd's going bubbly, but he never his, says yo, it. His promo was it so made, over the place too. I, like, it made no sense he, at all. It seemed like he was really drunk. Yeah, yeah, that's what it really did yeah. seem like. His promo. And then was Josephus the is singing "All Come Ye Faithful" with some girl, <laughs> and he goes over and he starts like singing with him, but he's saying the wrong shit. And I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "This is so over," and nothing's happening. Yeah, I liked the art, the art truth, twenty four seven stuff was. Funny. Oh, Santa. Yeah. I, was, I, just I didn't was, see it. it I funny. skipped it if I'm being honest. I, it was funny. I got home late that Monday, so I, I watched all my DVR, and a lot of it I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, let's get uh, past the shit. Let's get past the shit." Our, our truth thought he was going to see the Dwayne the Rock Johnson Christmas tree, not the <laughs> oh, Rockefeller Jesus. Center. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a Kira Tozawa oh, like, get they, pinned by Santa and all that bullshit. I was like, "Jesus Christ!" Yeah, it was, it was that, funny. that shows you what they, th- what they think of a Kira Tozawa. Yeah, but it was it was it was all a Kazawa and our truth the entire segment just chasing Santa. Really? Oh god! Yeah, it was it was did Santa win the belt? He did. Yeah, he did. He pinned a Kira. And then Archer's won it back. 
and then the referee said, "F you guys, it's Christmas. I quit. I'm going home." <laughs> so they couldn't. They, and then they're like, "Well, how am I going to win the title?" He goes, "Let's just call it a truce tonight. Let's go get some, let's go get some hot chocolate or something <laughs> like that." It's a shame Balls Mahoney is longer with us. We could have had Santa Claus yeah, come Santa back and win the title. They should always have celebrities win that, and then have them spread it on their Instagram or whatever. Yeah. They've, they, they've, they've done it. Yeah, they've had some. They had some. Yeah, like that race car driver. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Marshmallow, the DJ guy, Ennis Cantor, the basketball player. Uh, he used to smash Dana Brooke. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. There's a race car driver that won it. A college football analyst won it. Yeah, yeah. they've done a few things. So uh, yeah, so I mean, it was it wasn't a super busy week in wrestling, but uh, was, there's some stuff that went on. Uh, check out our Facebook page for more. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're gonna get to the TTs here. So we're gonna should we start with mail of the year? Should we end with that? I think we should end with that. Yeah, um, I agree. We're gonna we're gonna I think we should start with kind of a little weirder one. It's moment of the year. Okay. Uh, I'll start I'll, off with it just because it's a little I'm weird. Find a little off the beaten the, the path. gif of my moment of the year. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be anything. If that, like that, if that gives it away. This is. It's like anything best whatever the year that wasn't a match. It could be best outfit if you think that's what that was yeah. your favorite thing. Yeah. Best yeah. whatever. Mine are going to be a little... Best promo. Mine or two of them match. are a little cheesy. I'm going to put that, that up. Hey, it's whatever it is. Yeah. Like my number three, just kind of give a start here. My number three is just that first night of having wrestling on TNT again. Yeah. Just wow, that experience yeah, of being... Uh, like when I was in high school and you would, or even a little before high school, and you would uh, just be flipping back from USA to TNT back and forth. It, it was just such a, a throwback thing, and just having Tony Schiavone call in wrestling on TNT again, uh, just it, it, that that was such a big moment. I love that so much. So for those who are just listening audio only, and you're like, who's the new guy at the table? So that's actually Andy. No, he's, yeah, just really, sick, yeah. he's just really sick. So we're going to turn so to Andy here. Sounds, what, uh, terrible. What, what was your moment? Number so, three. So uh, uh, as I try to find... Uh I'm going to say my... What was it? I got you need some one. time? We can go counter. I got my two. What was the other one? I had it. I didn't write it down. Oh, Kofi won the title, so we'll make that three. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. For the first time, a, a fully black person, I guess, say full African-American, yeah. African-American won the title. So. Yeah. Um, that's like also, a real good feel-good That's moment. also my number three. So that's Save me some writing in there, Brian. Um, <clears throat> Kofi won the title. I, I, I still think, man, I, I would have been more unexpected and bigger if you would have won it at Elimination Chamber because it just came like I just remember being legitimately angry he didn't win it after Elimination I was like oh my but god but you were man. supposed to be it would have like, been was, more unexpected but not a bigger moment you can't get bigger than winning on Mania. I, I think between I, thought, I, can't. I thought Mania was okay, too, per, the, too predictable thing. but I was still happy it happened I think between Elimination Chamber and Wrestlemania they had too many things like up oh, you're out of chances now Yeah, I think they did that a little one too many times or two too many times yeah. but yeah. that moment in itself just came him winning and celebrating with his kids and the yeah. new day. Well, that was a repeat of the same mistake they made with Brian, where it was obvious Brian does a Rotella shot and they're like, oh, you have a shot. No, you don't. Oh, yeah, you have to yeah. wrestle Triple H first. Oh, you have to do this. It's like, yeah. dude, just give him the goddamn match. Like, just have the know. thing where he can't go after a belt for a month or exactly, if he does, he gets yeah. fired. There yeah. you go. So yeah. now they can't wrestle. He, uh, all the time I, I, they do yeah, that. I just, that, the buildup kind of ruined it a little for me. That was just the only thing. If he would have won Elimination Chamber, it would have been like, holy fuck, that just happened. But it's just, just the, the buildup after Elimination Chamber to Rumble was kind of like, bleh. Yeah. But him winning was a huge moment. I'm happy. Before. And so I that's think my number, that's my number three. I think what they lacked in the build up, I think they made up for it with the match itself. The and match was phenomenal. Daniel Bryan's a wizard, so of course it was. Yeah, yeah. Tyler, what was your number three? My number three was Becky Lynch winning the Royal Rumble. Oh yeah. For the reason that. why that's special to me was just because. You know, she obviously wasn't meant to be in the main event at WrestleMania. Like, WWE's plan wasn't to have her in. It was supposed to be Charlotte just yeah. Ronda one-on-one. Mm-hmm. She got herself so over. She grabbed that brass ring. That they had to just change up everything and be like, yeah. shit, she's got to win the Rumble, you know? And they learned from the mistake because Brian got himself so over, and they didn't have win the Rumble. Yeah, and they, they, they snapped out. They booed Ray Mysterio. No, we were yeah. booed Ray. And they are like, fuck Ray, because he came out 30, you know? Yeah. So they learned their lesson this time. Becky came out 30. She won. And they finally did the right thing, which WWE tends to be like, that's too obvious. Let's yeah. not do that. And they knew it was the right choice. They went with it, and Sometimes that's my number three. This is, is the good way to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Your number two, Brian. My number two, it's already been said a couple times, but it's Kofi. It's Kofi Ooh. winning the title at WrestleMania. Kofi Mania. Kofi Mania is my number two. Your number so, two. So these are like um, kind of like my favorite things. So yeah. I already said it, but uh, my number two moment is after Jericho won the title and says, Ooh. What's this? A little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> think how great that became. Yeah. A shirt. Yeah. A and shirt. Now, now the actual booze actual, exists. Yeah. And, like, and you could buy it. He almost and, blinded Ryback with it. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> I watched a review and they said it's a it's a dry taste, but it's pretty good. There was a guy, a wrestling fan, with a wine critic. Yeah, and they they, they reviewed. I have to share on the page. Hmm. If, 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 if you come across a bottle or two, grab yeah, it. I want I want to buy it to I'll try. Give, it. I'll Just, give you the and money. The, and the label's actually nice. It's embossed and like his title, like is like it's raised up and it's shiny and like yeah. his glasses and stuff. I did not so. know that that vineyard is co-owned by Stephen Amell. Yeah, I, I read that like a week ago. Was yeah. Friends with Cody. Yeah. So. yeah. It's, and but that's one of my favorite moments and like. Jericho probably made a million dollars off that. Oh, yep. yes. oh for sure. Yeah. Um, my number two moment is uh, just wrestling being on every single day of the week now. Yeah, how about it? I just think that's a real... Like, I don't even remember at a time in my life when it, it meant as much as it does now. Like, you, every single night of the week, you can watch pro wrestling. Yeah. Which is... I, you can't beat that. Like, it just... And that's number two. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, it's just it's just no, cool. Number one is Rusev and Bobby Lashley. Rusev. <laughs> it's 100. You already beat me. <laughs> that was the one thing on Raw. I thought this was one of the better Rusev Lashley, or Lana Bobby Lashley yeah. segments. Like, yeah. just because I, I, you had that little tweet. He's like, is Bobby going to turn on her? <laughs> Uh, honestly, it's growing on me only because it's it's better now that Rusev doesn't clearly care yeah, about Lana. Yeah, it's just like whatever. Like he's not even fighting her. Like, he's not even fighting anymore for, uh, for Lana. He just wants to get his hands on Bobby, and he's just slowly going out there and making uh, kissing girls and the conga lines. They and should it just, have it like he goes after Bobby's like sister or something. <laughs> yeah, they, they should bring back in that crystal that yeah, black chick right, right. she was so hot. Yeah, they they broke up. Oh, yeah. Bring her in anyway. Yeah, your number two. My number two is uh, I don't need a partner. And I don't need a friend. I need a brother. I need a brother. With Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes after their crazy match, one of the best matches of the year, potentially. Um, that moment was just so special because that match was just so great. Dustin was bleeding like a pig. Mm-hmm. They recited. They just redid Dusty's promo because Dusty had that promo back, like, however many years ago he did to Dustin. It was just a really cool moment. I thought that was probably my top AEW moment of the whole year. I thought that was great. So good. Yeah. So mm-hmm. good. So good. Your number one. Uh, my number one is all the way back at the beginning of the year. It was just that t- that day in Jacksonville, January 8th, when AEW is unveiled and you get to see it. And you get to just like, okay, this is for real. This isn't some, like, this isn't just some guy saying, oh, I've got these backers in Nigeria who are going to give me 10 minutes. You know, this is real. And they cap it with Chris Jericho showing up. And, and for the first time since WCW went belly up, with all apologies to TNA, with all apologies to Impact and Ring of Honor, you've got competition. Yeah. That, that's my number one moment. Um, cool thing about that moment, too, is... I order a t-shirt from ProWrestlingTees.com. Go check them out. And uh, I order the mystery shirt. So for five bucks, they'll just send you a mystery shirt of your... Oh, yeah, you uh, can uh, add uh, on, yeah. And and you have no idea what you're getting. And the first time I ever did a mystery shirt, they sent me SCU shirt from Jacksonville from that. So I have the worst town. This is the worst town I've ever been in. the Jacksonville edition. With the Jacksonville edition of the day (laughs) AEW started. Like, that is awesome to me. Like... Like like in ten years when they're like, well, what does that shirt mean? I'm like, this is this was day this was this shirt happened the day of like that's the only special edition shirt that happened that day. Yeah, like you know what I mean? Like that's I think that's cool, and I'm really happy that Pro Wrestling Tees even thought of even making that the, the special shirt. You know what I mean? Like super cool. Um, your number one. Andy. So my number one actually happened in December of last year, but they did redo it. I'm going to talk about because I never talked about it on the podcast. But it's Kotobushi versus Will Ospreay. Okay. And Kotobushi gives Will Ospreay a Frankensteiner off the top rope. And Kotobushi lands. And Will Ospreay flips. Oh, and he lands. Yeah, and he stands. Yeah, and he, stands, yeah, cool. and he just looks back at Kotobushi real slowly. It's like a horror movie. He looks back. He's like, the camera work was amazing. Yeah, and they did it. They did it again they too. Did it again, and yeah. it, it was this year. Yeah. But I was like, that was such a good fucking camera shot. I brought it up on my phone in case no one's seen it. But yeah. that was awesome. That's going to be a great future IWGP title match. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. those two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Will Ospreay's going to win uh, G1 next year, not next year, the year after. So I, I think mine would go kind of hand in hand with Brian's. Um, just, just the the Wednesday Night Wars. Mm, yeah. I mean, uh, that would, you know, if number two is just being happy, wrestling's on every single day. It's even more exciting that Wednesday nights are the biggest night of the week when it comes to anything. Like I love pro sports like basketball football but nothing gets me more excited than a Wednesday than watching AEW and NXT no. just going back yeah. and forth and it's not even like it's a competition where it's a blood sport it's just fun to watch I, just being a fan for both pro, pro I want almost. them both to do so I want them both to be on forever yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't I don't want any company to fail at this point like I just I love the fact that we can we have the choice of watching everything you know I, I love it yeah. so that's my number one is the Wednesday Night Wars Tyler my number one moment is Kofi Kingston winning the WWE title I think that's probably the most important WWE title win and probably the last, geez, maybe the decade. It might be the best WWE title win in 10 years. Kofi said it best after he just got, he actually just re-got interviewed for WWE backstage. They gave him an award for 
best moment of the year for WWE. And he said how special it was for, you know, young black kids sitting at home yeah. to see a black, you know, wrestler win the biggest title on the biggest stage possible and proving that it could be done. Yeah, you know? so it kind of, kind of makes them feel like, well, I don't know if you guys seen too. that video of MVP and Shad and like all these other black wrestlers at a bar watching the moment happen live. Right. And literally they're bawling their eyes out. Like they can't even believe it. Yeah. You know? Like it was such a big deal. I think it might be one of the best moments ever. That was just, it was a beautiful I mean, moment. Too bad it yeah. did totally end it shitty, but. Yeah. yeah. My, when it, if it came down to like moment of the decade for me this year, uh, for just the decade, um, I know you kind of talked about it in your thing, but man, Daniel Bryan coming back, it has that's to be. Big. That's my, oh, num- yeah. that's my clear number one. Like, yeah, it was great. There's not many times in wrestling where I get like emotional or I want to cry. Mm-hmm. Like, me personally, I, I'm, I'm going through stuff when it comes to my body and just like, you just want to I, personally I just I sometimes I'm like I just want to give up and then the, like that Daniel Bryan one was like no man you just don't ever like Daniel Bryan is the embodiment of just don't ever quit and believe in yourself and it can happen like mm-hmm. he's the embodiment of it like he's not uh, the biggest guy in the world he's not the strong like, you know what I mean but his work ethic his dedication and his determined to never stop is, mm-hmm. is, 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 is fucking heroic like Daniel Bryan's a superhero you know what I mean yeah. like he just is he he easily can go down as one of the greatest of all time in the in wrestling. Just when it comes to inspire, like Ric Flair's woo is super important, and it's one of the biggest things in the world. But the yes chant is everywhere. Yeah, it got so over. It's you know crazy. what I mean? Like How over that. Guy. That's one thing I give credit to Kofi too because <coughs> Kofi stuck it out for eleven years in that company, always being like just a middle pack guy. Honestly, man, I, if you would have told me a year in advance Kofi would be WWE champion, yeah. I would have been like, "How much you want to bet?" Like, yeah. I would bet you my house. Like, like, there's no, no way. It was yeah. not believable at. All. Like of all those new day guys, even though he's Never. a tenured guy, yeah. even though Never. he's a guy that's been there forever, and he's probably the best wrestler. I remember that year for Money in the Bank, they announced. Remember that for like a couple weeks yeah. leading up, they announced somebody from the New Day is going to be in the match, but mm-hmm. they wouldn't say who. I'm like, it better be Big E. It yep. better be Big E. Yeah. And then that night, they're like, it's Kofi. I'm like, why the fuck are they putting Kofi in this match? He's yeah. never going to be WWE champion. Why the hell is he going for the briefcase? And then fast forward six months later, he wins the Belt and I'm like, thank God, yeah. Kofi won the title. Yeah, you're saying the year before. A year before, I would have said if you would have ranked those three New Day guys and <laughs> no. most least likely yeah. to win the WWE title, he would have been third for me now been biggie xavier kofi what a way way back on the show i think even before you were on it we did have a discussion i, I could you could have been not here at the time when it happened but we had a discussion and i said uh, kind of like an early 2019 it wasn't a prediction it was just kind of a thought i threw out there and i was like do you realize kofi's one championship away from being grand <laughs> slam and everyone's like get the fuck out of here i'm like what if you know what I mean like remember that conversation like a long long time ago I don't ago? remember but yeah. I, I believe because we were it. talking about Grand Slam champions I'm like Kofi's one belt away and they're like it wouldn't and we we're all yeah. like it'll never happen yeah, but never. It, 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 we, it was it was brought up you know what I mean like how uh, about Zack Ryder's <laughs> one world title away from being a great yeah, slam? That one bad one real yeah, yeah, Hey, that. listen. All of a sudden, all the all, yeah. all the Italians in the world are like, we need a world champion. Yeah. If everyone you got gets, Bruno, damn. Yeah. Yeah. If everyone gets stuck in uh, Saudi Arabia again, yeah. except for, what's his um, name, Zack Ryder. Yeah, Becky will get the world title before. Yeah, yeah Becky will. But the him. biggest thing is with that as well oh, is my. that the Kofi thing was was heavily attributed to, to Daniel Bryan as well. Mm-hmm. Like, he was the one that said, yeah, no, Bryan's I want to be. Yep. It I, was just a perfect storm of things happening. Ali getting hurt, Daniel Bryan pushing for it, Kofi, like, seizing that opportunity to, when he gets put into the Elimination Chamber match. Is that, <laughs> is that Elimination Chamber go down as one of the best of all time? <laughs> elimination Chamber matches, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, well, think yeah. about that even what led to that. was very good. It, it was the gauntlet that even put Kofi on the spot. Him oh, yeah, that, that gauntlet yeah. first, that even made him people be like, yo, Kofi really shows something. Mm-hmm. And then he followed up with Elimination Chamber and everyone was like he's gotta win two back to back amazing showings like that that was nuts yeah but then talking about like just things of the decade like the Kofi thing is so huge even though it wasn't even my number one here I think AEW just as far as impact AEW is like probably the biggest thing one of the biggest things that happened this decade just the mm-hmm. emergence of New Japan as a worldwide player is a huge thing AEW is so important that it actually put a promotion that should be getting attention to get the attention it deserves because NXT was a second thought. It yeah. wasn't even like the act casual WWE fan didn't tune in to the network to watch it. No, NXT. not really. No, no one watched it. And then they would kind of maybe watch a takeover and they'd be like, "Oh, that was that was amazing," and still not watch NXT. Mm-hmm. So AEW coming to television and, and them saying NXT is going to go head to head. That's huge for NXT, mm-hmm. and that doesn't happen without AEW coming back. Yeah, it really doesn't. And, and and as far as other big moments, you talk about you're talking about Daniel Bryan, and, and and that is like just in the grand scheme of things, that was the most important thing. 
but WrestleMania 30. <laughs> for somebody that, like, Ring of Honor started in my backyard, basically, <laughs> and just watching it through all the years to see Brian friggin' Danielson being the world champion at the end of WrestleMania 30. Well, and the, just the backstory to that. Yeah. Like, they, they did it for this kid with, you know, for the like, Connor's Cure. Yeah. Like, if you can watch that Connor's Cure vignette, and not tear up, then you well, are no, a I stronger man than me. All the time over that you shit. are a str- like like that moment alone was like I need like like when people say, "Man, I miss the Attitude Era." I hate when they're so PG or they hate when they're super kitty. And then I see a kid like that in the crowd who enjoys wrestling, or we go to a PPW show and the whole front row is little kids. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that wrestling still has that ground for like there is shows you can go to that are not geared towards kids. Yeah, Impact yeah. pushes it a little bit, yeah. But for the most part, like. I think it's cool that kids are there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, because I would never want to take a moment away from a child. Because if that was the case, like, I should have been pushed away from wrestling as a kid. And it was the one of the biggest things of my life and still is. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? And it's it's so, like, yeah, man, that, like, I don't know. I, I didn't even really watch his whole career, but Daniel Bryan is just, such, like, just a super influential person. Where do you want to go next? Match? Match uh, of the year? Yeah, well, what's the, what's the tally of that? Uh, oh, the winner? Uh, well, third place is a tie between AW being unveiled and uh, the Kota Ibushi and uh, Will Ospreay <laughs> spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, second place is going to be just the Wednesday Night Wars. We'll, we'll lump that together in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just being like a, a big new thing. And then number one is Kofi Mania. Yeah. Well Kofi deserved. Kingston winning the uh, the WWE title at WrestleMania. Oh, man. All right. Match of the year. Andy, do you want to? Start this one off. Okay, number three. Um, for my number three one, so I'm gonna go a lot with Meltzer here, but uh, the, he actually has this one. He was five point seven five. I have it on my phone, that's what I was looking at, and it was uh, let me see exactly the date of it. It was uh, Will Ospreay versus Shingo Takagi, and it, I think it was the uh, it was the best of Super Juniors final, and that match was fucking awesome. I don't know if you, know if you guys seen it. Yes. And then uh, mm-hmm. Will Ospreay won that. Fantastic. Yeah, but that match is. Awesome. One of one of two that Shingo was, uh, matches that almost made my list. Yeah, June fifth, two thousand nineteen. I had to go back and check it out. Yeah, you can probably get it on YouTube, but yeah. man, oh, that was that was that was a great match. My number three, um, <laughs> it's I guess it would be part two of this of this trilogy. Okay, or it might be part three. I'm not I'm not sure when when Adam Cole and Johnny Ca- Johnny uh, Gargano got in the cage. That was number three. That was yeah. That was the, that was the was tie. June first. That the match. First takeover twenty five. That match was insane. I it, think? Just like that spot at the end when they came off the top, like it was just, it was crazy. It was absolutely fucking crazy. Like, especially knowing Cole was going to that, they're both going to that match banged up. Yeah. They've both been fighting injuries. Just, and Adam, the way Adam Cole can visually exp- like, I'm just so high on that dude, man. Like how he visually does his expressions in a match. Like he's like legit. Like I cannot believe that. Like he just, he's a master at what he does, man. And he's, he's a warrior. He's got a broken everything, and he's still yeah, wrestling yeah. every week. So that's my number three. If that's the same one, Dave gave that five point two five stars. Yeah, that was takeover twenty five. Okay. My number three barely made my list, and I kept taking it out, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in. But then I rewatched some highlights today because, like, before I came, and I was like, it has to. Cody Rhodes versus Dustin Rhodes. No. To me, that just the best storytelling all year long I've seen in one match <coughs> was those two. Just the build up, all the promos going against each other, where you could feel that it was real when Dustin was talking about how like they were raised so differently and how Cody was handed everything, and you know Dusty didn't really show Dustin the same kind of love he showed Cody, and just it all felt very very real. And the match they had followed he up. He created gold dust to piss his dad off. To piss his dad off. Yeah, <laughs> like, it just was such a great match. And that end, which why my moment of the year was also my my third, was just because that hug at the end. I was just like, what a beautiful crescendo, just all the way around storytelling. And I was like, this is perfect. Brothers yeah. can't shake hands. Yeah. Yeah. Brothers got a hug. <laughs> Number three, Brian. Number three for me is the first in that trilogy. It's uh, the two out of three falls from NXT TakeOver New York. Uh, Adam Cole and Jetty Gargano. The one that happened by accident because it was supposed to be Champa. Yeah. Um, Gargano wins the NXT title, uh, kind of reaches that plateau, climbs that mountain he's been climbing yeah. for almost two years, uh, overcomes all the odds to do it, and an un- unbelievable, amazing match. And uh, kind of going with Andy's star ratings. Uh, I think he's looking up Meltzer stuff. That was the first WWE match ever that broke the five star yeah, wall. Five point two five or five. For, uh, f- uh, yeah. yeah, and just an amazing match, an amazing ending. Just the just closing that show with uh, Champ and Gargano hugging was a, 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 a probably the best emotional high NXT had all year. I agree. Yep. Your number two. Bro. My number two is his number three. Cody versus Dustin, double or nothing. Because yeah. just the, the motions in that match, that's what made that. It wasn't the best. I mean, there was New Japan matches that were made better matches, mm-hmm. like technical-wise. For sure. Yeah, the yeah. match was it was great. And then Dustin bleeding all over the place. Like, yeah. Yep. 
Like it was just a very strong emotional match. It was awesome. My number two is also Cody versus Dustin. About it. I'm I I I'm kind of in the same boat as Brian when I came into this. Um, when AEW was starting, I was like, man, I'm here for Jericho. You know what I mean? I'm here for Jericho. I, I'm I'm kind of want to see what this Kenny Omega is all about. I never watched him. Um, but I, I, still I was want to see what he's all about. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just kind of like, man, I can care less what Cody Rhodes does. Like. I seen him in WWE. He never impressed me. I don't care. And 2019 has been the year where Cody made me eat my words, and I'm a fan of the American Nightmare. Yeah. Like I like, and that match is the one that I was like, dude, this dude's legit. You know what I mean? Like, and it did. It didn't help that, you know, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time is in that ring with him with Dustin. I'm a huge Gold Dust guy. I've always been a Gold Dust guy. Like I just like him as a person. Like you know, but just them two in the ring. Like you said, the storytelling, the promo, the promos couldn't have been any better. Lead Leading up to mm-hmm. it, it was just a great match. Tyler, my number two was Andy's number three, Shingo versus Will Ospreay. That match was just so incredible. I mean, the build up where Shingo was like this unstoppable junior heavyweight, yeah. which is even looking at him, it's like, dude, how's he even a junior heavyweight? Yeah, it no was, sense. Yeah, he, he, Shingo weighs at least two twenty. Yeah, but you know, he, he was a badass in that tournament, undefeated, like Andy said. And then he had Will Ospreay with just the little truck that could. I mean, he just kept coming at him and coming at him and coming at him and surviving and surviving and just uh, it was one of the best matches I've seen. Yeah, definitely. I have a suspicion my number two is going to be at least one other person's number one <laughs> and then that's going to be from the uh, the G1 Climax yep. <laughs> Kazuchika Okada and Will Ospreay in a clinic uh, amazing match which got rated I believe five and look. seven five I think I have it right here I yeah, almost five point seven five yeah and uh, that was uh, that's <laughs> like the only G1 match I put on here almost made it uh, Shingo and in, in a uh, Ishii almost made it for that me one. that almost made uh, Moxley Shingo or Moxley yeah Moxley, Moxley I, G. I loved Moxley Sonata yeah I did I yeah. loved Sonata and Okada too I love yeah. that match mm-hmm. uh, I love the story behind it but the one G1 match that really that made it for me was uh, was Okada and Osprey I tell you the G1 last year with Ken that one was fantastic. The G one this year was good, but not as good as last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was I agree. Incredible. You're number one. Did that match, Kazuchi yep. <laughs> Okada versus Will Ospreay. That was the best match I've seen all year by far. I didn't it see it, awesome. so it's not going to be in my top and I, three. I believe at the time, Will Ospreay was a junior heavyweight champion, and Okada was a world title. Because he won, he beat uh yeah he won it from uh yeah, Jay yeah. White at, at March that yeah. was in yeah. that, that was under but, that bracket right yeah but that was in the G one so it's a round robin the, yeah the winner of it. Gets the title shot at Wrestle Kingdom, and if Os- or if the Okada won because he was the title, he could pick as who he defended against. Right, and, who, and Osprey won. No, Kota. Well, that Kota match, Bushi won the G one. O- yeah. Osprey. Okay, Osprey won. Yeah. No, no, no uh, Okada, Okada won. won that match, but yeah. Kota Bushi won, and he got the title <laughs> shot. So that's why it's uh, Kota Bushi versus. Okada at night one. Yeah, okay. um, my number one is is going to be uh, NXT New York. Gargano, Cole. I I, I know they're, it's on here twice. <sighs> you can call me a Cole Mark, anything you want. But man, both those matches for me were amazing. Like we, how you were saying, I was like, how you want to come to the Dustin and, and Cody storytelling was the same thing with the with the Johnny man, the mm-hmm. guy, Mister Mister NXT, you know. And then he finally solidifies, gets his belt. Then him and DYI kind of get back together at the end. It was just a great match. Great match, great emotion, yeah. great everything. Yeah, that's my number one. Tyler. Mm. My number one, and I'll admit that I'm a little biased on this just because I wanted this moment to happen for so long, but it was Koto Bushi versus Jay White in the G1 final when Koto Bushi finally won. Okay. I won the, the year before when it came down to him and Tanahashi, I was so pissed that Tanahashi won because it yeah. should have been a Bushi. He should have been the one who took the belt off Omega. They knew Omega was leaving. It could have been like, here you go, buddy. You're yeah. the star now. But they screwed up. This year, I was like, all right, Bushi's definitely going to win. And then they had him lose like four matches in a row to yeah, start off. Like, and I was like, if they're going to screw Bushi again, I'm going <laughs> to smash my. Like, I was so yeah. mad. And then for him to finally come back, he was hurt early in the tournament. He messed up his ankle and he had to fight through all that. And then it came down to him and Jay White and they had a crazy match, a great match. Uh, to the point where I was like, shit, they're going to have Jay White beat this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, Jay White's going to win. And then Ibushi finally won and I was like, all is right with the world. Yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. The, the, I mean, the G1 wasn't quite where it was in, in 2018, but yeah, it was, it was a hell of a tournament. But my number one... Is Cody and Dustin from wow. from Double or Nothing? I I I love New Japan. I love their style, but nothing is going to be like that old school American pro wrestling for me. And and a story twenty years in the making. Dustin Rhodes, fifty years old, showing he still got mm-hmm. it. Showing he might be one of the most underrated American wrestlers in the last thirty years. And Cody just arriving, arriving on that first AEW show, and. 
I, I and it wasn't the most technically perfect thing in the world. No. It wasn't. It wasn't the. Uh, it, obviously, if you're going to grade in a vacuum, just you know the moves they're doing and how they're doing them and all that. There's way better matches. But for everything all together, that's my number one. It's, yeah. it's Cody and, and, and Dustin. And going into it, no one would have said, oh, that would match it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, match of the year for that matter. Yeah. And, and there it is. And yeah. uh, as, as a matter of fact, so tallying everything up, third place is uh, Gargano beating Adam Cole two out of three falls to win the NXT title. Uh, second place is Okada beating Will Ospreay in the G1 Climax. And number one, and the only thing to be on all four scorecards, is uh, Cody and Dustin wow, is the match it. of the year. Storytelling matters. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and so that's why people like the NWA. Yeah. yeah. The match will be a little bit better, but they'll get there. Yeah. Um, Male Superstar of the Year. Oh, wow. So, Tony, we're going to kick off with you. My number three. Um, Bobby Lashley. <laughs> exactly. No. How do you say? My number three is the a guy who, who, um, who I had no Give faith in going back to the match earlier. Zero faith in coming in the two ni- 2019, and, he, and he's going to be my number three on the list, Cody Rhodes. Mm. All right. thought Cody had a great year. He, he well, did. He did, yeah. I mean, two matches of the year candidates with uh, Dustin and Jericho. Yeah. yeah. And Darby Allen, that one was good too. Yeah, yeah, and um, Sean Spears wasn't great, but yeah. Sean Spears. It's the booking in that match was so confused. Yeah, well, sure, yeah, got, yeah. sure got a lot of lead up though. Yeah, it did. Yeah, that fucking yeah. Shot. <coughs> My number three is probably surprisingly going to be low for a lot of people, but my number three is Adam Cole. I think he had a great year. Um, I don't think it was as amazing as it, like you know CBS gave him the wrestler of the year and all this stuff. I think it was a good run. But uh, the two people I have um, above my list, I think, had better match-wise, promo-wise, and everything else. So that's why he comes in number three, even though he had a great year. Yeah. My number three, and it's low for him because of who he is, Oh, is Okada. I was going to say, we might wow. be a okay. nature. Like, Okada is... Um, we we were uh, kind of talking uh, before we started here, because I know Tyler's been doing us on all things wrestling and, and cross posting with our with our Facebook page. Uh, how you said that your wrestler decade is AJ Styles, and mm-hmm. I totally get that. But your second would be my first, and it's Okada. Yep. Just because he has become the man mm-hmm. in 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 a, an entire country, unlike anybody. Like he he has been everything that WWE wants Roman Re- wanted Roman yeah. Reigns to be. Yeah. He has been and he has delivered. Uh, but I, I mean, I think it's just maybe it's because his um, his 2017 was so good, his 2018 yeah, was so I'm good. Yeah, uh, like and and it's like everybody like I loved the match with Minoru Suzuki. Everybody has their their the one, own Kata match. The one in the rain. No, oh, that one was great too. Yeah. I was talking about one where Okada's just selling the knee for like <laughs> okay. a half hour. Oh yeah, that was a great match. I great love, match. I love that the the one in the ring was really good too. Wasn't that a draw? The one in the ring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Okada, because every everybody was convinced, and Okada had just won the title or just uh, yeah, just kept the title against Tanahashi because he yeah he just kept the title against Tanahashi. But he was like, oh, Minoru's going to beat him because it just made him look like he was so underpowered. I'm talking mm. about a match that's two years old. That's how good it was. Yeah, uh, but. But yeah, Okada's my number three, long story short, too late. Sidebar, 2017 for New Japan was a hell of a year. Oh, oh yeah, it was, it was probably the like, best year every ever. Every show was on fire. Mm-hmm. It was insane. I was like, this is so well, some, well, someone did say on the Facebook page, they're like, oh, you guys aren't, like, all the awards this year are going to nothing really going to New Japan. And I was like, I mean, it's kind of hard when, when most of your superstars are not in your company anymore. And the one, like, and, and AEW emerges, NXT emerges. Well, it's like... I think they might get one here. Yeah. I, I can't. I don't Nobody, know what anybody else is going to say, but I think they might get one here. Like there was no big come. Well, talk. Hiromu Takahashi. We really, he just came back now. So yeah, mm-hmm. and, and we had women. A lot of women's categories. Yeah, and, so, and they just ignore women's wrestling yeah. until yeah. hopefully now that Stardom might open that a little bit. And if we would have did like these awards, you know, the year that Kenny Omega was on oh top of God, the world, like, oh yeah, Kenny could have won. Yeah. Kenny and Okada number yeah, one. But at, at WWE and SmackDown and Raw may have been weak as shows for the year, but mm-hmm. they knew how to make a moment. You know what I mean? Like, still, yeah. there's still moments that were like, "Oh man, they were good moments." You know, mm-hmm. um, my number two, right? Steve Boy. Oh no, Andy's number three. Oh, number three, Andy for wrestler, male wrestler. Same thing, Kazucho Okada. So he won, <laughs> he won the world title in March, and I was there at Madison Square Garden, and he kept it till now. And he might might go through Wrestle Kingdom, but like he didn't have he had that match with Osprey. He had a couple other big matches, Sonata. And yeah, stuff, he had but, a great match with Sonata. Where Sonata only beat him. Which <clears> yeah. Is cool. Now, yeah. which one is this guy? Sonata was the guy with the, the spiky hair, but now he has like. It's like combed and like Okada's a rainmaker. Yeah, Okada's the dude who is now wearing 
like the, the, they make they make a big deal because he wearing pants and trunks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah, wearing yeah, trunks yeah, again. Yeah, he's not wearing yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah, he got rid of his pants. Okay. Yeah, well, so he got his trunks back this year too. Well, that was Wrestle Kingdom. So, but like he hasn't. They, had, do they pop when he took off his throat? <laughs> I know they went nuts. Yeah, shorts on. Everyone's like, like, yeah, oh, pants, short pants, short pants. I love the meme where it's like a bunch of people in a bar yeah. and they have that giant TV. <laughs> but yeah, from the World Cup. <gasps> yeah, as though it's in the World Cup, and then he just takes his robe off and the whole bar goes crazy. Yeah, so that's how it literally was for Wrestle Kingdom. The whole crowd went nuts. Yeah. So funny. His 2019 not as good as his 18 and 17, but still pretty good. He, he's still he, one of the best now, wrestlers in the world. He was the one who had the match with um, Marty Skrull. Yeah, at, all, all out. Awesome all in. match. Awesome. Yeah. Match. Where they went over and yeah. it was pissed backstage at Marty. Like, God damn it, And Marty. the best part of that was when he has it for the Rainmaker. He's like, two. Oh, five pushes him out, and then and that was all reversed. being the elite stuff. Too. Yeah, like every time we see him, he's always like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> telling Marty that's where he belongs at the cruiser race. And then Nick Aldis was having uh, yeah. Marty eat donuts to put on weight. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, man, that that match there put Marty over for me. Mm-hmm. I was like, I thought that was the best match of all. In that, I'm binding. That is Okada's genius. That is that is what makes Okada so good. Is he has everybody else's match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like if he's wrestling Minoru, it's going to be a map based match. If he 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 plays to the strength of his yes. opponent, that's what I probably try to better do. than anybody else. Yes, yeah, that's hundred percent what he does. How I base my end off of. Yeah, and, like, and Okada does no like nothing crazy. Pop rope elbow. You know, I think yeah, push out close tombstones. Yeah, tombstone. yeah, spinning tombstone. Well, that, that's what we talked about in the in the, oh, in the, the best drop kick, kick in the yeah. world. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, easily the best drop kick ever. That's what yeah. we kind of talked about during the PPW show. Is like no matter where on the card you are and who you're against, yeah. like you you put a solid performance on. No, I try to thank yeah. you. Yeah, I always try to adapt to whatever their style is. Yeah, mm-hmm. unless the match dictates like oh it's a brawl or something. You know, but, yeah. yeah, well that guy's getting another. Uh, supposedly he's going to be a, or a staple now. I think, yeah, because Paul Ball told me he wanted to bring him before. Yeah. And uh, I think he did that one show that was in Honesdale or whatever. Mm-hmm. Tony, you're number two. My number two, Adam Cole, baby. Dun, 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 dun. Um, I mean, the dude, I think I, he had a great year overall, but man, did he end the year strong. Um, mm-hmm. it just going into going in and beating Daniel, getting the win over Daniel Bryan on national television, then going in and doing war games. I mean, losing, but t- taking that bump and then going in the next night and the, with Pete Dunn. You know I mean? It's like, yeah. Just overall, just some amazing, amazing matches. Um, his uh, promo work still needs a little bit, but he's uh, I'm not saying they're terrible. Oh, I, say, I think he's great. Promo. I think he's good. I think he yeah. just needs more. I think they need they to put him on, more yeah, time. A little more time on the mic, but I mean, he, he's 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 the top of the biggest stable in, in NXT, and I think anyone that you put around him is just gold. Yeah, I can see promo need to work. I think his charisma is is, is mm-hmm. up there. Right? When he's in between the difference. ropes, he doesn't even need a microphone. Just when yeah. he does his facial expressions. And, and, and the boom, like everything. everything. Yeah, he's, he's a genius. He had one of the best promos ever in PWG. He was wrestling um, Cedric Alexander, and he goes and he hands the announcer a note, and he gets in the ring. And so the, the announcer starts reading the note, and he's like, uh, introducing first Adam Cole versus enter black wrestler here and the crowd boos right he's like and in case the crowd booed fuck you all <laughs> and I'm close, like baby yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious dude <laughs> like what, he what knew they were gonna boo to that one of my favorite notes like that was in from Chikara when they have the uh, Los Ice Creams against the Olsons <laughs> and uh, one of the Ol- Colin Olson the one that became Colin Delaney in mm-hmm. WWE he uh he had a note that it was a, supposed to be a doctor, so it was like, uh, Dear Chikara, please excuse Colin from this match. He is lactose intolerant. <laughs> Love Colin's doctor. Um, <laughs> Los ice creams. Oh, he wrote that ice cream and... Uh, ice cream junior. Yeah, ice cream junior. Yeah. Tyler, you're number two. My number two is Will Ospreay. Wow. I think Ospreay has... We already talked about he faced the dragon, he faced Okada... He's probably had at least three or four or five star matches this year. Mm-hmm. He's obviously the best junior weight in the whole world. Um, he's going to move up to heavyweight. I think he already is doing some heavyweight stuff yeah. in Japan. And he, yeah, he won the never title this yeah, year. Yeah, he won the never weight title. It's just a matter of time till he's the world champion there. It's just a matter of time till he's widely known as one of the best heavyweight wrestlers in the world. So I'm guessing, uh, and, and you can never really tell with New Japan, but maybe he loses the junior title to Hiromu. For sure. I would say. 100%. And then that's For his sure. graduation yeah. up yeah. to yep. the. Up to the bigs. Yeah, that has to be the plan. And then night two, uh, is he in a match with Liger? That, or no, 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 because it's like, yeah, he is. It's Liger and Hiromu no, versus Will Ospreay and someone. Is it? I thought it was Hiromu. Night, night one's the big eight man. I think it's Hiromu and Dragon Lee versus Liger and, and Ospreay? So, I don't remember. I'll have to look that up then. We'll look that up. That's, I want to do that. I hope Ospreay has a night two. I think he does. I think... Why would I'm look that she, up? The whole, yeah, I'm looking up. But, the, the whole oh, night yeah. one, night two stuff is so confusing. That's why I wish they just kept it in one night. I know why they do it and stuff, but I get it. But when, when does this happen? 
January fourth. January fourth and fifth. Yes. But it's it's uh, yeah it's three thirty in the morning. Oh, because it's Japan time. So in Japan, it's seven o'clock at night. Right. But for us, it's like three thirty in the morning. Yeah, it's um, I can't tell because of the way they do it here. But it's uh, it's on it's as soon as it's done, five minutes it's up to watch. It's uh, it's Dragon Lee and Hiromu against Naoki Sano and Liger. So was it Friday and Saturday night or Saturday Sunday night? It would be. It's uh, going to be like three o'clock in the morning for one thing. Fourth, yeah. So the fourth is a Saturday, right? But the fourth in Japan is the third here. It's it's because there's such a time difference. It will be like three o'clock Saturday, and then it'll be then then it'll be three o'clock like Sunday, I think. Wait, or see. maybe Friday, Saturday. I, it's, it's weird how they fourth. do it. It's very strange because it's yeah, different. So, so it's the fourth before. It's the fourth in Japan before it's the fourth here. So, so we. If, if I'm just saying, if we got together, I'm going to a Reading Royals game. Mm-hmm. I'll be home by like ten, eleven o'clock. If we all get together, we can watch a Saturday night at here. Like if it would be, yeah, be Saturday night in the Saturday. Mo- in the it'll be morning. like the middle of the yeah. night. It'll be like three yeah. in the morning. Yeah. It starts. I thought it would air. All right, I'm sorry. All right, no, yeah. no, it'll be, it'll be Saturday night. So at midnight Saturday. You know, you well two two a.m. Yeah. So it's technically yeah. Sunday. Oh, okay. Like usually, when I wake up, the main events on. Like that's, that's yeah. usually how New Japan. Works. So I, 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 you know, I have to work Sunday. So yes, if it's yeah, yeah I usually just watch, watch the it next Sunday day. and Monday. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. I'll probably I'm, I'm out. But yeah, last year I watched it live. Wow. Uh, what are we? Who, who are we? Uh, I'm at my number two, number two, which is the same as Tony's number two. Adam Cole, baby, baby. Well, just throw me in there too. So go ahead. <laughs> right, That's so, my number two. I, we've already kind of given all the superlatives about Adam Cole. I and, might have uh, the only one at number one. Well, you, wait, wait till we get. You to might. You. Uh, I might. Well, we already did Andy and my number. Th- so yeah, yeah. Adam Cole, number three. And, and when did he win the title this year? He won it. Um, for most of the year. Toward right? the middle of the year, like yeah, right. Because Gargano didn't have it long. Did he have the? Tag titles this year with their with or no. no was that last year that was last okay. that was last year what about the North American title no he that lost last, last year, year too. Okay. Okay. Yep. yeah so uh, we're yeah, but, well, consist talk about having consistently five star matches mm-hmm. there you go Adam Cole there absolutely War Games is up there mm-hmm. Tony you're number one my number one is the man who continues to reinvent himself Chris Jericho that's not bad number one what a year I mean leaves WWE goes to Japan wins the Intercontinental Championship. Um, you know, what I mean, and then and then starts AEW, wins their World Heavy Championship, and he's just he's the must see guy on challenges every, for the IWGP title. Yeah, and then he's the must see guy every single night at, on Wednesdays. And the promos, they just yeah, it's phenomenal. Fantastic. He, it's a good pick. He can literally say anything that comes to his brain, yeah. and it becomes like a T-shirt, t-shirt yeah. and it sells. Yep. <laughs> he just I got a ticket. I, I mean, another guy, if you want to put up there as the man of the decade, it may not be match quality, but when it comes to reinventing himself and just what he's done for companies everywhere he goes, yeah. he's must-see TV mm-hmm. anywhere he goes. Not many people can go to the other companies and keep doing that. It's just humble, except like an AJ Styles, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, AJ's going out and putting a five-star match on, but... But AJ's always kind of just AJ Styles. Yeah. Like he's he's enhanced at what he can do, but he's always just AJ. Like yeah. Jericho... Jericho can go to a promotion and, it's, and time stops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jericho, and I, I heard somebody describe Cody Rhodes like this when he was in WWE and he was doing like the dashing thing. And the Jericho's a guy whose Wikipedia page will have very definite, definitive breaks. Yeah, like okay, the champion, the, yeah. you just made the list. Yeah. Lionheart, conspiracy victim. I mean, just like WCW, he was he was a guy who should have been overshadowed by everything around him, and he still sticks out. Mm-hmm. Then he goes to WWE and he comes into WWE. I'm sorry, WWF. He comes into WWF at the height of some of the biggest names on the roster with Stone Cold, mm-hmm. Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, The Rock. The Rock is out there tearing it up every week. Night one with The Rock and yeah. debuts head to head with The Rock and just immediately makes an impact. And like it just anywhere he goes, he just does that. He just yeah. steals the fucking yep. show. Mm-hmm. That's my number one of the, of, of the guy of the year because I mean to keep doing that. At, and 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 not getting any younger, he's just. Yeah. I, I honestly think AEW would not be as big right now. Oh, not even close. If if Jericho wasn't not there. even close. Uh, we were going into the new year. We kind of talked about who is the biggest signing AEW would be, and and everyone was like Kenny, Kenny, and I was like, man, I think Jericho is bigger than Kenny at this point when it comes to as a big a big name signee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, he, and he's kind of proved it. Kind of, and he, I mean, and he went up against Kenny to start it. You know. Yep. Yeah. So uh, that's my number one, Chris Jericho, Tyler. My number one is the greatest of all time, Chris Jericho. Wow, no. well, I yep. didn't think you guys were going here. Yep. Number one, yeah. Pretty much exactly the same all reasons. 
not even for match quality, which he's had amazing matches this year. You know, he had a great match with Kenny. Naito. He had a great match with Cody. He had great matches with Naito. He had that, you know, we talked about the Okada match. He beat the shit out of Okada in that match. They yeah. made Jericho look like a monster in that match. He, like, dominated the whole match, and Okada, like, barely beat yeah. him, you know? But like we were saying, he just turns every single catchphrase he has becomes a huge hit, becomes a t-shirt, becomes a meme, becomes this, becomes that. Just well, isn't his big thing in Japan? Like he's like, hey, fuck face. Like, yeah. He calls everyone yeah. fuck face. Well, I think they don't want them cursing now, but he was doing that for a his while. His whole big thing yeah. is he's the pain maker yeah. over there because he yeah. keeps mocking Okada and shit. But he's just great. He's, well, he still kind of rocks to the AEW. Yeah, yeah we'll a get bit. into the Darby Allen match. Yeah. 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 He'll but do yeah. like the Clockwork Orange type. Yep. Get up, yeah. I think this might be one of Jericho's best years ever, and that's saying a lot for a guy who is as confident as Jericho is. <laughs> yeah. That's a, it's a good pick. Unfortunately, it didn't make my list. If, if I would have had a four, he would have been fourth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my number one, kind of surprised when I sat down to think about this. I wouldn't have said this was... You, if you would have told me this would be my number one. No. Seth Bruce Rollins. Seth, Seth Rollins. <laughs> I'm burning it down. It's Will Ospreay. Uh, mainly off the matches. Mainly, I think this is the year it all kind of turned on and and you kind of see that sometimes where i think last year it was adam cole Mm -hmm. like oh wow adam cole everything everything is all coming together for him this year i think it was will osprey he put on consistently great matches he elevated himself he's he's right on that precipice of Mm -hmm. being the number one foreign guy and one of the top guys period in new japan And, and he's my number one yeah, and I'll add on to that since he's my number one as well. Wow. That he was in uh, almost every tournament in New Japan this year except for World Tag League. So that's New Japan Cup, the G1, which is crazy. Best of Super Juniors. Yeah. And what was the other one? There was one more he was in too. But it's crazy how he was in all this stuff. It's a now, hardest working do you think, guy. Do you think he gets that love if Kenny Omega never leaves Japan? I don't think he gets that opportunity. Well, he will for the juniors Yeah, you know, all that. He and might I- have been pigeonholed a little in the juniors. Yeah. But, uh he, no, t- he took an opportunity around. I honestly don't think it would have changed. I think they would have probably built Osprey up to face yeah, yeah. Omega. You know, that would have been a match. Because they, they like to have like four big guys, but then there's always They the just next want four. reassurance you're going to stay. Yeah. Once Osprey moved to Japan, he lives in Japan full time. He doesn't yeah. live in England. They were like, and then he signed on for like, five years. Yo, yeah. To the moon, brother. Like, yep. so. That's and, why that's why they're waiting for Dakota. Like, yeah. He wouldn't yeah. sign. He wouldn't sign. He finally signed. He signed a title shot. Made event Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, very close one here. Uh,. There are uh, three points separating the third place from the winner. Wow. Uh, no, uh, third place is Chris Jericho. Uh, second place is Adam Cole, and New Japan gets one. Yeah. Stop complaining, yeah. Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Well, Will Ospreay great. is your male wrestler of the year. Good stuff. In an upset. I love yeah. it. I like uh, it. He, he even started that tag team, the Birds of Prey, with uh, Robbie Eagles, and that was I'm not a, too. I'm not a fan of Robbie Eagles, but... That's a cool name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they were in... Uh, uh, the, I love the last name. The last name's great. This, the, what, what's the the junior tag team tournament? They were in that, yeah. too. Yeah. It? yeah. Do you want to so give us a talk, quick recap? Talk about a hard-working guy, Will Ospreay. Um, and his girlfriend's beat previously. I got to see if I have the uh, the list from last the week. The list. Here. Oh, that's on there. The list. All three weeks are there, aren't they? We did four weeks, did we? So, hang on. I think I have it in my coat pocket. <laughs> I know I brought it for some reason. I, uh, if not, we had it on Facebook, right? You made a whole thing about I, it. I yeah. didn't do last week's. Oh, okay. I, Which is here somewhere. When he's pulling the paper, it reminded me of Johnny Carson with the whole like thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to do Karnak. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. And this way we could put like a thing out there, like photos and saying who, who's the, the number one of each category this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I uh, just have to find it. And if any wrestler that won wants a Brent, uh, once, yeah, yeah. Once Will Ospreay, TTP, was if Will Ospreay, you want a Tornado Tag podcast, <laughs> or Okada, let us know. I will definitely. You three entertain yeah. the people. I'm going to go through my coat. Yeah, I yeah. will definitely send you a TV, a T-shirt, and you can rock that. Moshi Moshi Okada san. If if you can, if you can, like, if any wrestler would just wear like just like a like, like imagine, on TV, like, yeah, like that'd be insane. I mean, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <coughs> I'd even take an indie guy rocking it. Oh, I did hey. have like an indie guy rocking, not a, a Tornado Tag shirt, but uh, Fox wore my. My blue meanie BWO shirt during his match. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that yeah. was awesome. And then he uh, he took it off and he rubbed it in his, <laughs> his sweat and he threw it at me. Um, I got a lot. Of- has so many pockets. <laughs> God, that's I got disgusting. I got. It was funny though, but I got so much love that night. I got a Sambo show mask. I got. Nah, that's cool. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. It was so much good. It was such a good show. I thought um, so too. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Um, now stuff for the decade. Um, if you definitely want to check that out, that's it is hard because like, I mean, there's so much in two yeah, years. Yeah. Like, wow. Um. If, is there is there a topic that maybe we didn't touch on that you would like to maybe put in there because we do have some time to kill here? Oh, you mean current like the uh, like something maybe we didn't cover, but some another another award show type thing. We can go over, uh, for example, I, I didn't I didn't, I didn't post it today yet, but um, 
I'm about to post uh, the pay-per-view of the decade. And what I'm picking for the pay-per-view of the decade, and you guys can let me know your opinions if you agree or disagree, is uh, NXT TakeOver New Orleans. I think that was the best pay-per-view in 10 years. I think it, that was Champer Gargano in the main event. That was um, Dream... Who did Dream face? Ricochet? Hold on. What get... was the one? Was the It was the... Uh, the, the, the ladder match when it was Ricochet Cole that was all that was on that one that was New Orleans that yeah. was New Orleans. oh in yeah. EC3 yeah <laughs> that, he it, took a crazy bump yeah he though, did you know? he didn't do much that's his uh, first and probably only five star match that, yeah. that poor guy that ladder match was so great because was that all, the first five star match that Dave Meltzer gave NXT uh, that, that I, I match? doubt it I don't think so I'm, I'm, sure, he's, sure. I'm sure he's given others before yeah. then well, bad news. I don't have it in my pocket. It was oh. a different well, note. No problem. If you want to uh, take those along with you. Oh yeah. I, well, I can. Yeah, we'll definitely get up on the website, and I can do. I can do the winners from memory. I'm not going to be able to do the. Uh, you don't have to worry about second and third. Yeah, I don't have to worry about second and third. Um, I'm just trying to remember the topics we did <laughs> last week. I know send, we did. I'll send to you. Uh, Pay per view of the year. Uh, well, let's just start from week one. Uh, the disappointment of the year for week one mm-hmm. was uh, the winner was just. WWE in general. Uh, or no, Ring of Honor. I'm Ring sorry. Of Ring Honor, of Honor yeah. was the winner. WWE in general was the second place. Um, well, well deserved. Yeah. The, um, the women's wrestler of the year was... Oh my Becky? God. Or Tessa? Becky. Tessa was second, and then Shayna Baszler was third. Did, yeah, did, Becky won a point. that that street fight with Tessa and uh, Sammy Callahan? They were fighting outside. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. It reminded the, me kind of of like Anchorman when Ron Burgundy was fighting. <laughs> yeah, his what's her name? Yeah. yeah. The tag, Veronica Corningstone. The tag team of the year, and this was one of the uh, clean sweeps we had. Everybody had the same first place vote. It was the Undisputed Era. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fish and O'Reilly, Red Dragon. Then uh, from week two, the breakout male star of the year was Ace Austin, um, with a close second being Angel Garza. We also had MGF and Sammy Guevara getting mm-hmm. a lot of votes. Keith Lee, I think, was in third, though. Now they read it a little more. Uh, the second clean sweep was breakout female star of the year. That was Rhea Ripley. Our um, feud of the year was Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano. And our TV show of the year was NXT. Um, just eking a win over uh, Dynamite. over Dynamite. And uh, actually, SmackDown was second. Dynamite was mm, third. Wow. And uh, NWA Power did get some support, Power. too. <laughs> Power. Power. Uh, last week, just going from memory, our most prom- underused, underrated, Which male and women, male and female. I believe. Cesaro uh, won that one. No, no Sammy Zayn was the won Cesaro that one. award. Oh, Sammy Zayn, yeah, Sammy Zayn, Sammy Zayn, Zayn and Naomi. Naomi won. Yep, yep. for the female. Uh, the promotion of the year was NXT, yep. which is still bullshit. It should be WWE, yeah. but I digress. <laughs> I'm fine pay, with NXT, pay, I'm fine with pay, WWE winning if you can't like you say hey WWE won for this yeah, year because NXT, NXT was so good yeah. you know what I mean um, pay per view event of the year and I, that went to uh, NXT Takeover New, New Orleans York. no New York or New York New York yeah New, New York. Orleans was yeah. last year and then today's winners just to kind of recap what we've done today the uh, to finish out the TTs hmm. your moment of the year is Kofi Kingston winning the WWE title at WrestleMania. Your match of the year is Mania. Your match of the year is Cody against Dustin Rhodes at Double or Nothing, and your male rest of the year is Will Osprey. Yeah, I did not see dun, that coming. Dun, 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 but honestly, I don't dun, 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 also watch. Yeah, Japan, my so. biggest surprise was Cody Dustin actually winning match of the year. That's yeah, crazy. I yeah. love that. It was great, yeah, and yeah, it was no the only one, one that going made going all four of our lists. Yeah. Too, so yeah. it was like kind of a group thing there. But here was the list for uh, the reason why I chose. NXT TakeOver New Orleans. Here was the match listing. It was Adam Cole defeating EC3, Killian Dane, Lars Sullivan, Ricochet, and Velveteen Dream to crown the first ever North American champion. Then uh, Shayna defeated Amber Moon for the Women's Championship. Great match. Mm-hmm. Great match. The Undisputed Era defeated the Authors of Pain and Pete Dunne and Roger Strong. That's when Strong turned on Pete Dunne. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that was, a hell, that, that was a hell of a match. Then Aleister Black um, defeated Andrade Almas for the NXT Championship. What barking at? Hold on one second. Keep and up. and then the, uh, the main bar. event was an unsanctioned match when Johnny Gargano defeated Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah cool, and that was where Gargano uh, <laughs> worked his way back into NXT yep. because he had lost the match where uh, he had to. He was basically fired, and then didn't he have like a mask on or something? He beat up Champ or something happened. But yeah, mm, I don't remember. I just remember that whole pay per view. Just like every match was yeah. like five stars, five like four and a half, five stars. It was just such a good. And pay-per-view. I think it was kind of the same thing with uh, Takeover New York this year, where 
I think the only match that would have maybe been that level was the four way women's match, which was still really awesome. They're really good, yeah. And you had like uh, Black and, and Ricochet against. Uh, and I never liked that tag team, but they had a good match against the Raiders. You had uh, Pete Dunne and Valter, which for me was maybe the probably the second or third best match of the night, and that would be the best match on any other show. Mm-hmm. That uh, match for Valter and Tyler Bates just missed yeah. my list. I was going to put that instead of Cody versus. But the, the only reason I didn't make it for me is maybe a little too long. It went a little too long. Like, I thought the heat. And there was, was a little, a little too long. many kickouts. Yeah, like, there was a lot of kickouts, and they had a better match, which I I hate saying like, oh, they had a better match against each other, but somewhere else yeah. because that shouldn't matter. But they had a better match in progress. That yeah. match was great. They beat the shit out of That was a, a low-key good show, too, and I don't even watch NXT UK, but that no, takeover no Cardiff was good. <laughs> that that tag team match is my tag team match of the year. That was a that, good that tag match. That match was incredible. Again, storytelling, just <laughs> straight-up storytelling was fantastic. Yeah, that was definitely. so great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The only one that was, kind of lacked that one was the uh, girl match. It was like Tony Storm versus... Kaylee Ray. Yeah, yeah and they had, yeah. They, they, had Tori, they had her lose, and then she cried. Yeah, and, uh, I, I hate that when the girls cried. I wasn't really that crazy either about the Dave Mastiff match. They Yeah, they, 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 both, they both looked like yeah. they gassed out towards yeah. the end because they're such big dudes, but it was okay. But that Cesaro match, too. So Cesaro yeah. and Jagunov, that, that was, was great. really good. It's just uh, funny because, like, Cesaro's the type of dude who just, like, fits NXT UK so great. Yeah, why you know? would they just send him there? I mean, you're not doing anything with him. Like, yeah, oh, they sent Hero over there for yeah. you. I get, I get why they're doing a separate brand for UK because, like, they have so many, like, you know, wrestlers. They can't, yeah. You can't have 30 guys they, from they UK also, on NXT. <laughs> they also wanted to kill the UK indies. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's exactly what they did. And I got so much flack for saying that online, saying that like, Triple H, like, literally killed. And everyone's it's, like, it's, no, we didn't. It's yeah. still going on. I'm like, yeah, it's going on now, but it's all their the top stars, talent yeah. is, is in NXT UK. Yeah, so that people know? get raised that are either aren't ready or they suck, you know? And even the guy who owned Progress, which Progress is my favorite, like, United Kingdom company in mm-hmm. England, it's been for years, the owner of that left to take a job at NXT yeah. UK. I'm like, like, Jesus Christ, they're even taking the ownership. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and now they're talking about Progress possibly being on the new 1499 <laughs> yeah. network. Yeah, that the, uh, the network. I always, I, to me, that made sense. I thought they should have just straight up rebranded Progress as, as like, NXT yeah. UK. Yeah. And yeah. just Why kept not? the guys running it and kept the storylines going and just make it the NXT title now. And yeah, like, it's NXT. Know, UK progress. There Walter was a champion when they signed him. Like, it, yeah, know. and they took almost everybody. It's like I don't, I don't, I don't like how they did that. Like, and they tried to do that with Japan too, but Stardom turned them down, and also I think Dragon Gate turned them down. I'm hoping maybe if they're yeah. gonna have progress on there, like on the 1499 thing, they start like mentioning on NXT UK like the history of progress. Like, yeah. oh, like Walter and uh, like Tyler Bates wrestled a great match there, and they had a rematch here. And, yeah, because like, you know, why would you go back to watch it if you didn't? know? I don't know anything on there. Yeah, exactly. Right. The funny thing about NXT Japan is like, yeah, they like I, I don't know if it's even a thing to talk about anymore, but they're saying how. If they do that, it may wind up being Big Japan. Yeah, of they, all of them, like, <laughs> the deathmatch company is going to be the one they <laughs> okay get to sign those guys because I think Noah turned them down as well. Yeah, yeah, it's like you know, you can't go to Japan and say like, we want to buy your company. No, no, like, yeah, get out of here. and respect they have over there, like no. So I really don't want there to be a WWE section everywhere. All over. Like, I don't. Just, it's just too much. Imagine mm-hmm. if they did that even in Japan, and let's say they do one like India that they want to. Okay, there's four NXTs now. Yeah, so that's. F- Three more takeovers that are gonna well, well and then times two <laughs> yeah so six more takeovers a year and, and then eventually they're like hey uh, we're gonna guys next year we're gonna have NXT Canada yeah <laughs> it's like god damn it it's like enough NXT South America yeah. so so Tony came back and now we hear fire whistles yeah. what did you do so what happened was is Heidi invited um, our friend Nikolai and Kevin over for ch- gift exchange oh okay then forgot and then Heidi's thing is she goes upstairs and just goes to bed she, like she I gets, say she, she gets naked all oh. right so. So they came in and didn't hear them. So they went up and just like, whoa, not open the door, but they're like throwing stuff at the door yeah. to get her to come out, not knowing she was obviously not dressed. Um, but Nick, this is the gift that Nikolai got me. So remember we play Fear Pong? Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is actually like it, you buy the ball, like they have special balls. Okay. Yeah. So they're like the, the game's actual balls and it comes with a really nice. Oh, and there they go. <laughs> It does look pretty cool. Fear it comes pond. with its own ball sack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Two it, uh, balls and a little sack. So basically the way Fear Pong works, Andy, not that you drink, uh, you it's beer pong, but you put these under the cups, mm-hmm. and then there's like dares on them, and you can keep your cup if you do the dare. And oh, then okay. it comes with some more gam- da- dares. Re- read read a random one. So this is... Uh, free ball. On your next turn, toss six balls at once in your opponent's cups. If none of them land in the cup, you drink your own cup. Um, you can decline this free ball 
but you will also lose a coaster. If multiple balls land in an opponent's cup, they must do both dares that are on the card to keep their cup. Oh, wow. So if they, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like a, that, that one wasn't like a, a dirty thing. one. I was yeah. for Some of them one. were bad. Like, oh, there's some. Make out with your sister. Battles. Yeah. Yeah. Invite everyone in the room to rate you on a physical attractiveness on a scale of one to ten by writing it on a slip of paper and putting it in the sack. Uh, read the results one by one. <laughs> at least what if you had to guess who wrote like what? Oh, play the game with the rest of, with this sack over your pathetic little ball throwing hand. <laughs> you know what I never got about a beer pong is like, you know how people are like all like hygienic and stuff. Yeah, you're taking a ball that everyone's touching, that's rolling on the floor. Yeah, throwing it in a cup and I, drinking it. Yeah. And then, and then, oh, we washed it off by putting it in this filthy cup so, of dirty so water. So what we do is you you get your own <laughs> cup, you get your own cup, and uh-huh. then you drink out of the cup, and then all the cups on the table are water. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. That's because hygienic. When I see people like, Relatively. That's hygienic. fucking so, gross. So the only r- kind of rule um, is if you are drinking yourself out of a solo cup mm. and you have it sitting on the table... And they shoot it and make it in your cup. Okay. You have to chug that oh, cup. Oh, okay. What? That's all right. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I always have a can. I usually try to put a can yeah. on the table. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that, so Nikolai and, that's and cool. they drop some gifts off. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Sorry about that. I had to excuse uh, myself. So what, what all, what all did I miss you? I uh, was just talking about uh, the UK <laughs> and uh, some different. Uh, Tyler's going over his biggest pay per view of the decade. Um, we're just talking about different decade things. Now, I did have a game if you want to jump into that. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, this centers around the decade, and this is a very straightforward, not a big high concept thing. A lot has happened since uh, 2010. Mm-hmm. So basically, this game is you three are going to guess who held certain championships on January 1st, 2010. Oh, wow. So at yeah. the very beginning of this decade, who was the... Blank champion. Okay. Uh, pretty straightforward. I think I might be good at this. Yeah. Per and uh, I may not, because this is a, at the beginning of the decades when I was not into wrestling. Yeah. I came back into wrestling the, the, the Royal Rumble Batista won. Well, that was what? 2004? No, 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 the second one he won when he oh, came back. 14. So, where, oh, so okay. people 2014. So, 2014. People told yeah. me to tune Christ, back why in. Why did you jump back in then? I would have shut the TV off. Yeah. Because Fuck this. Every, it got worse. Everyone told me I need to come back to wrestling to watch CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, and it was both their last matches. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, um, since we ended with you on the awards, we'll start with Tyler here. And we're going to start in the indies. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. I might not be as good as I thought it was going to be. So January 1st, 2010, who was the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion? Oh, fuck. I got it. 2010. I I guess this one, too. Hmm. I was actually at the show where he won the title. 2010. Who the fuck was that in 2010? So, not to give it anything away, but a lot of people from ROH are now in WWE. (laughs) So that might help a little bit there. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not PCO. <laughs> it's, just reason when it's, it's not John Xavier. Yeah, Xavier. Which, what, was it Owens? You're going to say Kevin... We're gonna, That's Kevin, my guess. Kevin, Kevin Steen. Kevin Steen. Andy. Austin Aries. Tony. Um, think, who, think who you know that was in Ring of Honor that's in WWE. Adam Cole. Adam Cole. All four were Orwich champions, yes. but only one was champion January 1st, 2010, and it was Austin Aries. Ah. I was, was going to piggyback on you, it, but I didn't want to You should have. He was so confident. I believe yeah. that was his second. Uh, it was. It was. Right. His first yeah. one was that he beat Joe. Yeah. Uh, when Joe had that like two-year long I remember, hair. I remember when and he that's beat when he Joe. had long hair. Yeah. Really? Yeah. This one was the one. I was actually at the show where he won the title. It was when Jerry Lynn was the It was actually the night after Masawa died. Okay, yeah. And it was, uh, it was in New York. It was the Hammerstein Ballroom. And the main event, Ric Flair was supposed to be out there, but he came out for like a quick appearance and left and and he never paid back the shit. Yeah, and then he wound up stealing forty thousand dollars from them. Did you go to the the show at the Armory in Philly where Masala wrestled? No, I went to the one at the Manhattan Center. Okay. I was living up in North Jersey where he wrestled Kenta in a singles match. Yeah, I I, I was in the tag match where it was Masala, some combination of Masala, Kenta, and, and uh, what's his name. Uh, Marafuji? Slice bread, yeah, Marafuji. Off topic real quick, but is this January show going to be the last time that Liger wrestles, or has that match already happened? No. No, that would be... The Those two shows in January. Yeah, and then he's going to have a retirement show uh, with the New Year's Dash or whatever. And I don't know if he's going to wrestle there, but that's his official like, 
retirement thing. So he might not wrestle there. So and, yeah, Wrestle Kingdom is his last. And, the, and and these are going to be too hard. Uh, the Triple Crown champion at that oh. time was Satoshi Kojima. Uh, the GHC champion in Noah. Wait, was, wait, 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 wait. And so I was. I would say Marafuji, but then I would say. Go Shizaki. Close. Ugh. He won it like a couple weeks later. It was uh, Takashi Sugiura. Okay. And no uh, But the one we're going to go for for Japan, and Andy can go first, who was the IWGP champion uh, January 1st, 2010? Nakamura. Tony. I'll go with Nakamura, too. Tyler. I don't know. So I'm going to go with Nakamura. It is Nakamura. Ah, yeah. I was looking at my belt and thinking. Although he shortly <laughs> lost it after that to uh, Togi Makabe. Yeah, which, which, why did he give him the belt? Well, Tanahashi was recovering from the eye thing. He had yeah. the busted up eye. Is that why he does the eye thing? No, that's Naito. That's Naito. That's oh, Naito. Tanahashi is. I'm terrible. I'm sorry, guys. Air guitar God guy. damn it. Don't, don't, <laughs> now don't we're going to go to. Now we're going stateside, but we're going to TNA. Oh. Still total nonstop action. Tony, who was the TNA? 2010 TNA was still pretty good. 2010? It was, st- it was starting to <laughs> lean towards shit, but when, when did Aces A happen? 2012? No. I'm not saying anything. I could give it away. Aces, Aces A, that was when it went That down, was when know. it was. That yeah. was that. Well, I'm done. I was, I'm like, I'm not I'm done. I'm not watching this shit anymore. AJ Styles. Tyler. I was going to say AJ Styles, but so, now I think it might be wrong, but I'll go with it. So 2010 TNA world champion. The very beginning of the year. Uh, no, he didn't win it. No, that was after. So, no, so, um, Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode? We have a three-way tie. It's AJ Styles. Oh, is it? Everybody wow. has two. This, uh, this was, like, January something that year was when Hogan and Bischoff and all showed up, and they went oh, on Monday. Oh, yeah. Nasty boys were on. Yeah. So, AJ was a champion then, and shortly after, he lost it to Rob Van Dam. He had actually won I a five-way. Wow. And Arby didn't even lose it. He got attacked by Abyss, and they stripped him of the belt because he couldn't, like, God. defend the title. How, about, the how about the guy in the one page saying that RVD is the worst heel? Oh, do you see oh, how, how, how I went ham on that? Did you see I went to the actual post and fought with the person who posted on that yeah. page? And I'm like, I watch every Impact show I have since the beginning of it. And I'm like, well, you sound like a goddamn moron. Because <laughs> <laughs> right, right he, he was like, uh, this, this gimmick should have been given to a younger wrestler. And I was like, hey, fuckface, how do you give a young wrestler a gimmick of you guys all are RVD marks and stole my moves yeah. because I was that ahead of my time. How does a younger wrestler have that gimmick? Yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah. And it, and hey, Will Ospreay, but go out there and tell everybody they stole your fucking yeah. moves. It's like, huh? <laughs> I've been doing this for like 12 years. It's like, we don't give a shit. Go out there. I would love to see, though, like... Uh just something where he had like a fresh out of ra- like just somebody's because of the way he looks are thinking of Drew Adams yeah like oh, I'm an old haggard veteran <laughs> like I've been doing this for a long time Ace know? Austin could pull it off yeah, yeah Ace Austin because yeah, he looks he looks young as hell too yeah. you see the picture he took of him with naked with the belt over yeah. his crotch yeah with some girl's ass yeah. Like, yeah that was good stuff so we're gonna stay in TNA here uh, Tyler who on January 1st 2010 who was the TNA X Division champion. Oh my god. Speaking of Ace Austin. Shit balls. Oh my god. Uh, This is a hard one. Let me just think about who the fuck was even there. Oh god. 2010. It's hard, yeah. Uh, no, he never won. I can tell you who all the champions were in 1990. That I can tell you. Not the X Division champion, it wasn't around. Who the fuck? Jesus Christ. Uh, Oh man. X Division doesn't have to be like a high flyer, right? It can be no, it, it was. It's not about weight limits. Yeah, it's about no, no limits. limits. Yeah, but it, it, was, it was like the cruiserweight, but there was bigger. I don't know why suicide is popping in my head, so suicide. I'm just gonna guess suicide. I don't think that's him, but let's see. I, I'm gonna say Samoa Joe. It's probably somebody like off the wall. So it's like, not about weight limits. Because Samoa Joe was yeah. definitely an X Division champion. I'll go with Joe as well. Joe, you're all wrong. Joe had it before that. Right before in December of 2009, he lost it to. And you're going to get in trouble for this, because Mr. House of Glory, he lost it to the Amazing Red. Oh, oh wow. Oh, yeah. I forgot he was ex-champion. And I think this is that little part where Don West was his manager. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I want to see Amazing Dang. Red versus Facade. That'd, That'd be, be dope. That'd be pretty good. Uh, and uh, one last <laughs> TNA one before we go to WWE. The TNA Tag Team Champions. <sighs> Andy, you're, we're back to you. This is a hard one. I but. don't think... I don't think beer money was together yet. I, I, so That's what I was going to say. I, I'm going to go. No, I, I think these guys were broken up, but I'll say America's Most Wanted. No, wait. Were they on that show? No, they they were broken up already. Fuck. Uh, that was probably the best impact team ever. I love yeah. America's Most Wanted. They were uh, Jesus. Triple X uh, is good, too. Uh, I'm going to go. Who did, who did Kaz tag you with? Um, 
Oh my god. I guess I will say beer money. I'll just get beer money. I'm gonna say Team Canada. <laughs> I'm gonna say it was R Truth and Pac Man Jones. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Tyler. Team three D. You're all wrong. Uh, this is a hard one. It's funny because they wanted in a four way match with beer money in the match and Team Three D in the match. Uh, it is a uh, one of these men is a current champion, a current world champion in a uh, in a, an American promotion. No, idea. he has the ten pounds of gold. Sweet Charlotte, Nick Aldis. It's the oh. British invasion. Nick Aldis and Doug, Doug Williams. Williams. Wow, I would have never uh, got the Mag- got No, it was Magnus and, and Doug Williams. Yeah, Magnus and Doug Williams. I never would have got. Yeah, that. I would. And, never and we're not going to do because nobody's going to get it. The TNA Knockouts champion. It, was it? Was it Gail Kim? No, that would be my answer. Was it Victoria Tara? Yeah, it was Tara. Ah, it was Tarantula. <laughs> she had, she beat. And this is classic Vince Zuster. She beat ODB like a week before and lost it like a week later. There you so go. That, so now let's because the titles don't matter, bro. It's wrestling, bro. <laughs> you know what would get you over yeah. if you drop the belt you just won, bro. right now. Yeah. And it's like, how the fuck's that get me over? It's yeah. like, bro, don't even start. Be- I was broke the, the attitude era, bro. Twenty. Years. I got everybody over by dropping the belt every week, bro. Twenty years later, they're still talking about it. I had bro. Kane win the belt and drop it the next fucking day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, everyone hated that Russo. It's like, no, bro. People love that shit. He won Jericho, man. Oh, he said bro so many times. It was just insane. I'm going to uh, make Andy mad here. We're in. We're kind of in WWE. January 1st, 2010, who was the ECW champion? Ugh. This is one on TV Tony. for WWE? Yeah, it was yeah. shitty ECW. Tony, where do you? Oh, wait, no. Andy, where do you? If it wasn't, it's either a big show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, throw, throw out you get Matt Hardy, wonderful. And then it was uh, Christian, but I don't think it was Christian. And then, oh, Mark Henry. I'm going Big Show. Wasn't Kurt Angle? No, no, was it? Was it? No, he was in, but he never won the belt. Mark Henry. Mark Henry. Tony. <laughs> Big Show. Big Show. Tyler. Christian. John Morrison. Somebody has taken the lead here. Tyler. Tyler took the lead. It is Christian. This was at the very end. ECW was done in uh, <laughs> February of 2010, and they went to NXT. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, Christian beat Tommy Dreamer for the title in Philly. I remember that. And that, then that was so ugly, too. He, he kept it for a long time. Yeah, it was like silver. Mm-hmm. He kept it for a while. And then on the very last episode of ECW, dropped it to uh, Big Zeke, Ezekiel Jackson. Oh, that was God. such BS. Um, this is back when, and these are going to be too hard to get back. This is back when the uh, women's title was split to the women's and the divas title. Okay, so 2010, we're on SmackDown. Which SmackDown had the women's title, right? I don't remember. So that would be was it Lay Cool? Uh, kind of. Okay, so well, it was Layla. It was Michelle, uh, Michelle McCool. McCool. <laughs> yeah, we won't we won't count these. It was Michelle McCool? Uh, was the uh, the women's champion? The Divas champion was Melina. Okay, I was. I would but, guess someone. I, I would say uh, Candice Michelle. We'll get down to the final four here. Uh, the I don't have the U.S. title. I don't know why I didn't grab grab the U.S. title for this. But my personal favorite, the Intercontinental title. Tony, where to you? Who was the Intercontinental title champion in 2010? I think Dave was on the roster. Um, this is this is a hard one, especially if you weren't watching wrestling at the time. It's a hard one. I got a couple ideas. I have a couple ideas too. He's, what if he said Nathan Jones? He, he never <laughs> won the title. <laughs> Don't say Nathan Jones. Are they still on the roster? Yes. You gotta take a lifeline. Yes. Well, everybody, he's, he's going first. So everybody gets to know he he is still on the roster. Randy Orton. Randy Orton. It's definitely. Uh, I, I, let me rephrase that. He <laughs> he is on the roster. That's a that's a kind of an important distinction. You still going with Randy Orton? Randy Orton's still on the roster. He is on the roster. Take that for what you will. <laughs> All right, so Randy Orton's not correct. Yeah. Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy. All right, here, it's down to two people for sure. So I have to go fifty fifty in my head. Oh fuck me. Unless it was one of the periods when it was some whack. Johnny whack. Nitro. Or you were saying. Edit that all out. Yeah. My bad. Johnny guys. Nitro. Johnny Nitro. And I say Drew McIntyre, the chosen one. We're all caught. Tell us going to be right. Let me just say this. If it's not Johnny Nitro, I bet you it's Chef Hardy. Because they were the ones in my head. I was like, it's really? one or the other. Or maybe it's, it's, it's uh, Nitro, the Miz. It's it's one of you is correct. It's a Tyler. It's Drew McIntyre. It's Drew McIntyre. Oh. Yeah. He beat John Morrison. 
uh, for the title. Hey, there we go. Yeah, but, yeah about but, it. But it was Drew McIntyre. That's why, because when you say he's he still, it makes it sound like he was there the whole time. Oh. And he was there, and he was fired, and he was got back again. Yeah, and, and he's doing absolutely nothing. Talk about a guy that's being wasted right now. So now we have the WWE Tag Team titles. Was there two at the time? No, just the one. Just the one. Oh. Who's first? Uh, this is you, Andy. No, no, no. It's Tyler. Tyler, Tyler. Just Tony went first there. Oh, my God. Shut I, I have a deep cut in mind. But uh, I, I don't. 2010, they were a little low in tag teams. I'm trying to remember who the hell was even teams in 2010. It's not the Pitbulls. Well, we know it's not Eminem because uh, Nitro right. just lost the uh, IC title. It's not the Dicks. It's, mm, fuck. It's not um, the, it's the Highlanders. No, you were Robbie. No, no, I, the, one was about the, the one was about to get in trouble, though, for being at that TNA show. Yeah. Poor guys. They ruined their career by doing that. How oh, stupid. Oh, my God. I can't even think of any teams that... Who, were, who the hell was even champion at that time? Um... Um, yeah, it, this is a tough one. This is it might is it might isn't it? Can we can you tell us if it's a team or two guys or no? Um, rather not. It, it, it's, a, too much it, it's a team, but it's two guys. Okay, it, it's definitely two guys. <sighs> that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> I have an idea, but I don't think they were together yet. I know that like it's a team, but it was two guys. I know Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre won the belts together, but there's no way if he was in a contract, yeah. he didn't win the title. Did Cody Rhodes well. and uh, Ted DiBiase win the belts? I don't think so. They, uh, they they did at some point. They I'm not did at some point. Here. <coughs> Maybe that's that's the time period. This time period. Sure, that'll be my guess. Just because I can't think of a team, so I'm going to guess Cody Rhodes. This time period awesome. sucked, by the way. Um, it wasn't good. I'm going to go with uh, Jericho Show, Big Show, and Jericho. Tony, that I'm going to go it. with Team Hell Yeah. Hell yes. Oh, that didn't happen yet. That didn't happen yet. <laughs> right? We'll, we'll they give you that one. It was an OVW. Oh, <laughs> that one. All right. Well, then, I, like I said, I don't know this era. I did not watch. Um, You're all wrong anyway. Was it Juice and Domino? You were so close. Jericho lost the titles at the, the December pay-per-view to the champions to at this time. To DX. Oh, Fucking my wow, God. Man. Oh, my Fucking God. Wow. As soon as you said Jericho, I was yeah. like, it was DX. Oh, I was right. close. And then they lost it to, um, I believe they lost it to Showman. Ed- Edge and, I thought it was Edge and Randy Orton. No, Edge and Randy Orton were the champion. Or no, Edge and that was that was before that. Uh, I remember, remember they that, had yeah. the the rated RK over the and Triple H got hurt. Yeah, I remember that. But I, yeah, <laughs> no, blew his quad out. He it was his second. Yeah, time, yeah. yeah. I think that was a little before this, like doing the pedigree on the t- commentary table. No, that was the, that first, was the first time, time. With Jericho. Was, yeah, with Ben. The Andrew. second time he, he fucking tore to someone the the hammer. No. Yeah, I think that was before. Before this, this, um, is, this is a good game. You could do this up any month. Like yeah, the next yeah. month could be completely different. Yeah, I like his games. <laughs> so uh, we have two left here, and we okay. have right now. It's it's anybody's game still. We have Tony at two, Andy at three, Tyler at three. The only way I, the reason I have points because I still I piggybacked. I'm just yeah. Well, no, you got AJ Styles first. Yeah, this is oh TNA AJ Styles. Yeah. Uh, this one is the World Heavyweight Championship, the big gold belt, which at this time was the SmackDown Oh, okay, championship. yeah, and, and then the, the WWE title was on Raw. Was on Raw. So, so Andy, you go first. So, so the WCW belt was on SmackDown 2010. Booker T. King Booker. Booker. King Booker. I'm going to say... If it's not him, I... Uh, yeah. Maybe. I know who I'm going with. Yeah. Lesnar. The Undertaker. I was going to say The Undertaker. I was going to say The Undertaker. Brian. Lesnar was in UFC. Yeah. Was he? <laughs> yeah, he was gone. Know. And Brock never won that, the WCW title. Well, the, that I thought he goal. did have it once. No, no. never. No. All right. Fuck me. <laughs> well, one of you was correct. It's The Undertaker. Oh, it is The Undertaker. That, you know, is that you what know he why I knew WrestleMania? That? It's because <laughs> Edge won the Rumble that year, I think. Mm-hmm. And Taker drops at the Jericho Elimination Chamber, and that was Edge Jericho and Mania that year. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, but no, Booker was actually in TNA at this point. This is oh, when he was yeah, in the main he, event yeah, Mafia. Yeah, 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 he was, he was actually in that tag match where the British Invasion won the tag titles. Wow, how about that? So the final one here is the WWE Championship, and Tony, we're going to you. Cena. It's a safe bet for most of the time. Yeah. That's a good. That's your hedging. A safe one. <coughs> it's one of those sixteen. <laughs> did Cena ever have the big gold belt? Yes. 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 A couple did. times. 
Yeah, when they were doing the two But you know he didn't have it here. It was Undertaker. I feel, had, like, I feel like this is when it was spinning, was, uh, if, if he did have There it. may have been some spinning going on here. Yeah, well, well after, when he first won it, when, when they first did the spinner, the spinner lasted for like yeah. eight years or something like that. Really? Yeah. So even, everyone had to use that stupid spinner? Yeah, like when yeah. Edge had it, they would be like the, he would have the R thing and it would spin. Yeah. That's so bad. Mm. All because spinning rims. Yeah. I think I know who it is. I think. I, 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 I got an idea. Well, it's your turn, Tyler. Seamus. Right, I'm going to go with Edge. Yeah, Tyler's got this time knocked down at Sheamus. This was right after he came up from ECW, and he beat Cena in a tables match to win the title. Because they did this whole thing. Sheamus when- just came back this week, too. Did yeah. He, yeah. Did he wrestle? No. I think, was it just a run-in? Or- it was just uh, another promo. No. Yeah, they did a whole thing where Jesse Ventura, this was, this was, oh, it was so bad. This was when they did the guest hosts on Raw. Ventura was one of the better ones, but in 2009, he came in and he did a battle royal. He was a guest GM. And they did a battle royal where it was only people who have never been the WWE champion before, and the winner would get a title shot. That's kind of cool. And then in, in the main event, the only thing Ventura wanted is he wanted Vince McMahon to come out and do commentary with him like it was the 80s oh, again. That was so and good. he had Vince wear the bow tie and the old blazer, and, and uh, Sheamus they, they won the battle do, royal. like, retro nights. They, yeah. they did them sometimes. They, they did, but they weren't, yeah. like, as good as, like, that t- uh, the Impact one. Yeah, like, like they, yeah. they didn't go full bore with it. Yeah. Like, the big, like, a huge letdown last year was that Raw 25 thing oh, when they yeah. had, like, three matches at the Manhattan Center. That was a Center. flop. I just want to state back to back game winners. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, Tyler yeah. wins with five. Andy that's, had three. That's a good Tony one. had two. I mean, we could do that any year, any month. Yeah. 100%. Once in my head, I I visualized what happened in 2010, and once I knew Taker was the world champion, I was like, all right. I yeah, know, that was my second I, I know choice. Sheamus wrestled Randy Orton at the Royal Rumble. <laughs> I know Sheamus won. Then Sheamus dropped the belt at Elimination Chamber to Cena. Cena immediately lost to Batista because Vince McMahon guaranteed Batista a title shot because he beat up Bret Hart. Don't know how that gave yeah. a shot, but whatever. Then Batista defended the title against Cena at that year's mm. Mania. Well, wow. about it. There you have it. So, uh, like I said, we are going to do. Um, we're bringing back topics next week. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to. Uh, Brian's going to head it up. It, but you, I, you, you could probably jump in there with him as well as Tyler. You're on your own with this one. I have. I cannot help you at all. Um, but we're going to do Wrestle Kingdom, right? The history of Wrestle Kingdom. Okay, yeah. yeah. Specifically, we'll, we'll look at the general thing in the Tokyo Dome, but specifically these last fourteen, thirteen, fourteen years mm-hmm. where it's been Wrestle Kingdom under that name, and, and you can read a book called Eggshells, and it. A, uh, I don't know why it's called eggshells, but anyway, well, it's to called Tokyo Dome, the egg dome. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. but it chronicles all of every single Wrestle Kingdom for the past fourteen years. Wow, wow. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have any other ones that they kind of have in their head that they want to do that they want to throw out there to kind of give the listeners an idea of what can be coming? Mm. Well, I know we were talking before the show started about because two weeks from now, do you want? To, is that okay to announce? So yeah, two weeks from now, we're going to have the RetroSoft Studio guys calling in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that will be the topic that week. Yeah, so with that topic, we're going to do um, our Brilliant. favorite re- wrestling games. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That'd be yeah. real fun. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, Even we, though we're probably gonna be like, no mercy. Like, <laughs> like well, not so much. All right, done. Not so much our favorite, but we can kind of maybe do like the time. T- some great, great yeah. games all around. Yeah, yeah whatever was great. Yeah. And then, uh, well, I'm sure you get maybe ones. stuff about the Rumble coming up. The, the Royal Rumbles coming up soon. Yeah. That's did, always been one did of Did anybody play WCW Thunder growing up? Yeah. Yeah. I you, rented it. When you would highlight on the wrestler and they'd have the oh, the promo. Dude, that was, that was fucking the awesome. They did the same thing on Nitro. They yeah, only the Nitro had the promo was, was on the PlayStation versions because yeah. they could physically fit them on the yeah. disc. They, oh, the wow. promos were not on the N64 versions. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't I play video that. like that. Yeah. I do oh, not have shit. Nitro or Thunder. Oh, really? I had Nitro. I think I just rented Thunder. And I do have Mayhem. Thunder was shittier. Thunder was Mayhem is at the video game store that I got my other ones at. Really? Yeah. It sucks. I had WCW versus the World, which was very good, yeah, Dude, very good. Very Ultimate, good. Dra- Dude, Ultimate Dragon was my shit. On yeah, that game. I well, love that. Was, in that and WCW versus the World was Revenge's first one. Right? No, that's World Tour. That's World WCW Tour. WCW versus the World was on was on PlayStation. Yeah, but no. it was the same. It was the same engine. It was, it was the really? same yeah, game. Yeah, but there was it was like here's uh twenty WCW guys and. 28 like New Japan guys all Japan guys with different names yeah, different, different names, names. Yeah. Yeah, oh cool. wow yeah really cool and a couple of Mexican guys too I gotta I gotta hook up my N64 and play a little bit of those Japanese games for a little and try them out I never actually physically oh, they're, played well the virtual pro wrestling is really good their yeah. ones are a little little trickier yeah uh, token road um, that'll pretty much wrap it up we'll get some plugs out of the way Andy what do you got okay so Call of Power Ring tomorrow will be out so, because we what, what do you guys talk about? Uh, Star Wars. Because we've all seen it. Yeah, we talk about Star Wars and review some comics and stuff. And then debate power. Not so much Wednesday Night Wars because there really wasn't any. 
<laughs> and uh, I'll be at ACW this Saturday taking on Dame for the ACW Heavyweight title. I'm you like that it. comment I put? I said, if you take another title off him, he's going to start to hate Yeah. Him. And he, he was like, what yeah. if I already do? And then he said, I'm going to kick his teeth so that far down his throat be eating his own ass. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then he said, this is what uh, Andy has to get, <laughs> yeah, get ready. Like Andy. assing me in the face. Yeah. So uh, yeah. should we club reverb and reading? So I think, believe that it's bell time is 6.30 or... Uh, yeah, it's six, Saturday. six thirty or seven. Yeah, Saturday. Oh shit, I'll be at the I think is it a Saturday I'm going to the Reading game? I forget. I have to look well, at it. Well it's in Reading, so you just go right over to Club yeah. So it should um, be pretty good. And then uh no, it's next Saturday. And then uh um, I was at, and when he was lifting weights, and he goes, "This is me uh, training for Andy." Yeah, yeah. And I was gonna write on Andy's port. He's he's about halfway down his pokey decks. So. Yeah, <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, what do you got, Brian? Uh, Murder my dude is uh, on hiatus right now. We're mm. just taking a few weeks off for the I holidays. Quit. Sabbatical. A little sabbatical. A little. There's too many kids in the house to to record. Um, but we'll be back. Uh, not this coming. Uh, we usually launch on Thursdays. So. Uh, not this next Thursday, the 2nd, but the 9th of January, we'll be back with uh, Season 3. Black Dahlia is going to be coming up, another unsolved one. Uh, what if you've played L.A. Noir? One of my uh, favorite a, games there. A, a lot game. of a lot of part of that quest line was heavily influenced by the Black Dahlia. Wasn't that season like over- season one of American Horror Story had a Black Dahlia? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, and then uh, just stay tuned. Uh, ProjectHumanoid dot com is the best place to go. You can look at us up at Murder My Dude. Did you guys ever do Gacy Facebook? yet? No, no. There's some greatest hits ones we're holding back on. Uh, Manson we haven't done yet. Gacy we haven't done yet. Joe uh, he means from CCW. <laughs> uh, Pogo the Clown from XPW. Same yeah. guy. Oh, God. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, it was Gacy's name when he was a clown. He Was Was it? Yeah, I didn't know that. That's where that I didn't know he was from. Pogo. Wow, about that. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, well, we have a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, just stay tuned and uh, check us out on ProjectTuneNet.com or Facebook, Twitter. Just look up Murder My Dude. You'll find us. Yep. Tyler? All Things Wrestling on Facebook and HouseOfGlory.net. There's both places you can find my shit. Awesome. All right, guys. That was going to do it. Um, happy New Year. You guys, I you guys, uh, hope you guys had a great 2019. If you didn't, man, let, let's make 2020 even better. I know we have a lot of cool stuff planned for you. So hang in there with us. Tell your friends. Share the page. And keep and, and stick here. Stick around with us. Like I said, if anyone wants to call in, you're more than welcome to. We, we, we'd love to have you. Um, that's going to do it here for... Um, uh, Tornado Tech Podcast. We'll see you next time. Here's some no rain checks. Arriba! Karate! Ah!